Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You say greetings unto Yisrael, who be it the house elected according to his commands, his insight, the wisdom of the Most High. We greet you all in your Shua's most powerful and prominent name, the only name given under Hashem, I am whereby we must be your shach, and that is delivered from the laws of darkness and sin that tend to cause our minds to go away and astray from the commands of Almighty Yahweh in Yeshua. It is one thing about the beauty of the Shabbat, and that day shall come. When Yisraya as a people, they will know. And there will need no need for anyone to teach them the Torah, the disciplines, the ordinance, the commands, the instructions, the counsel, the riches of Yah. For they shall know all things as the Ruach HaChodash, the spirit of life, the integrity of Yah, shall lead them in the power, the wisdom, the revelation of Torah. And until that time, we must be instructed in the principles of Yah, the commands of Yah, the way the derech, the way that we must halach, our striding, our walking, must be in accordance to what Yah commands us. And when we come to that time and that day, then truly the Shabbat will be a Shabbat unto Yisrael. There will be no need for the teachings, the exaltation, but we shall be a nation of people that will gather under the umbrella of the faithfulness of Yah. We shall dance and sing and rejoice. So until that time, there is a prelude that we should practice that in our constant activities before Omari Yah. Something is wrong with us when there is no excitement about Him. When I was in the world and you went out to the dungeons of darkness, to serenades, and my time period that when you did not cooperate and participate, they will call you a lame. You had no step, you had no unction in your bump, so you had to move. And so in this hour that we're in, because we don't understand the beauty of the Shabbat, we don't teach our children, they are not excited about the Shabbat. We don't teach them the reverence, the beauty of the Shabbat. There are children that can sit before a television for five, ten hours and will not move. As a child coming up in the Baptist whorehouse, I don't care how young you were, you stayed attentive to what the man was saying. The first thing children do today, parents, they're taught just, you're not a part of this, so you do the frivolous things that will not develop your mind and your beauty and so you find them doing all kinds of things, folly. And thus, this house is not the place for that Yisrael, the house of Yah. So let us parents, from this moment forward, no more of that with your children. You take away the little folly of things that cause their minds not to even concentrate, that their minds are not even on Yah, all right? You work with them that they can stay awake for the moment. Believe me, they can. Our children went out the other day and believe me, they were not sleeping on the van. They were awake and the parents were awake as well. So you may call me harsh, but this is the true reality of what must be done, Yisraya. We must begin to reckon our actions and our activities that are an assault, an insult unto Omari Yom. And if we do not teach our young ones the order, how will they learn? This is not a place for them to play and to draw and to do silly little things. 
It is not a place for them to do that. Let them open up the Torah whether they understand or not. This is not the place for that. They have enough time for playing. It's not a time for you. So when we all come into the full knowledge of Yahshua HaMashiach, Rabbi Yah said you would need no man to teach you. We are walking in the power of the Ruach of Yah. Then the Shabbat will be a day of great accolades, of praises, exaltation, and the great esteeming of the name of Almighty Yahweh and the power of his Hamashiach. And that must be identifiable. It must be an act, action, above all in the Zachim, the elderly men, and the elderly bath of Tezayon, that their actions must represent that. It must. And if their actions do not represent that, they're not leading the young ones in the course that we should take. And so we have failed drastically when it comes to the instructions, the mandates of Omariya. And we wonder why they go astray from Torah because we have shaped their minds, their attitudes in some of the most deplorable wickedness that can be imagined. And they don't know how to react. They don't know how to respond because we as a people, a nation, we do not know how to respond to young. Because frankly, we just do not give a damn. We don't care. There is no heartfelt want for him. It is a damnable superficial pretense. There is no sincere motive with Yah. Much pretending, but nothing that is sincere. Hallelujah. You all let that time come soon and now. For the Shabbats would be a delight. Unto Beit Yisrael. And they shall rejoice in the abundance of his great riches. His power. His truth. His strength. And delight in that. Hallelujah. I want to begin to continue in the path. Of the teaching on the mark of the beast and the mark of man. It is one thing about this Bohemath Ma'ach. There's a reading of the Torah that Yoshua HaMashiach in the book of Lucas, when he had been tried and tempted by the powers and the forces of hell. You must understand. That when Hashotam began to buffet and try to baffle him, there were short dims of darkness that surrounded that environment. And so there was this onslaught in the mind of Yoshua of this buffeting and buffeting and trying to seduce, coerce him unto a discipline that was far from the Torah teachings of Omariya. And it says that as he overcame this onslaught of Hashatan, he went into Galilee. And there, as his custom was that day on the Shabbat, someone handed him the stroll of Yeshia, Yeshia, Isaiah. And he stood up and he began to read, is what he did. And after he had finished reading from that portion in Yeshaya 53, he gave that on to the messenger in the Bayat of Yah. And he sat down. And they began to marvel and wonder at the wonderment of his speech and his power to open up the revelation of that speech of the Nobi's heart. It says that from there he began to teach them and to show them 
the profoundness of truth and we as a nation we're liking it so much because the enemy has done an excellent job of raising up the false entities of darkness to distract us, to cause us to walk in an errant path. Men that are shallow, they have no substance of buoyancy that they cannot rise above their own traditions, uh, their own nature, their emotionalism. Uh, they cannot rise above that. And it causes the mind of Yisra'iah to be distracted from one of the most vital and one of the most important things. That the power of Yahweh in Yeshua is the strength unto his elect. And we must understand that. So this religious force of darkness and hell that pursues the mind of Yisra'iah. If you control a man's mind, you control everything about that mind. It is one thing that a man with beasts, he trains them in a way that they understand his sound. And they control their appetite with controlling their mind. And the powers that be. As we hear many today talk about the chip and all that, the logistics of that, even in one of the most... Uh, savvy electronic ages of all time uh, it could never be done and it cannot be done it is not going to be done that way the mark of the beast the bohemia and the mark of man the earth the mark the design of the mind the design of the conscience in everything today is being designed by the powers of, of darkness Design our minds to be anti hamashia Design our minds to despise the authority uh, of those that rear us and teach us uh, what is proper, the protocol of life, uh, what is valuable for us as in our growth uh, and us proceeding uh, unto the higher level. So it is in the conscience of man. That we've been taught that way. And one of the most uh, powerful entities uh, is what Hashatan controls. As I preached many years ago on Hollywood. The power of deception. My friends, it's not going to be done by the chip being put in people. Because the logistics of that even in a six billion plus population nearly seven billion uh, you don't have the time to get it done it's not going to be done that way you look at nations and countries uh, to implement that even a system like that even in a time of great technological savvy uh, it cannot be done it's not going to be controlled by this assumption uh, of this computer they call the beast uh, that was once located in Hungary uh, or in other parts of the world uh, is not going to be done that way. It is much simpler than that. It is a simple process. I want to begin teaching here today and I make no apologies uh, as to my approach, as to the way things uh, are spoken uh, from this rustum, from this pulpit. We saw how Arzachin labored on the Chatve Imet to try to ingrain in our conscience uh, even the concept of the voice or to Shemach, the very elements of the voice of Almighty Yah. When Yah speaks, as he brought out to us, uh, it is his goal, it is the essence of the wholeness uh, of Almighty Yah. So whatever word he speaks unto us, it is the representation of the wholeness, the completion of his power, his might, his strength, his intelligentsia. And when he speaks unto us, he speaks the fullness of his heart. It is simply that we do not shimak, we do not hear even the simplest of his speech. 
Even the Daba, just one word. We don't hear that. And because we don't, we have construed things by our own mythology of interpreting uh, and defining things uh, that we are a bunch of nicompoots. We are lost, we are ignorant. Uh, we are people that are not savvy when it comes to Yah, but we are savvy headlong uh, to go after sin uh, and to walk in wickedness without even conscience of that. I want to begin in the book of Gileana, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 13. Let me say this to those that deny Yahshua HaMashiach. I simply ask you to call me or write me or we will have a dialogue. You say that the Most High is great and why does he need Yahshua HaMashiach? I will answer the question for you. Because first of all, these men do not have the wherewithal of the knowledge of Torah. They are easily deceived men. They are like a ship in the ocean without a rudder. They are persuaded by the least of doctrines and they are convinced because of their own stupidity of the knowledge of Torah. They don't understand the aligning of the Torah. They don't understand even the birth of Yahshua HaMashiach and many will dispute that according uh, to the Torah of Yah and say that the Torah teaches that a man cannot go into uh, a woman that is not his wife. And we understand that everything was created by the Torah of Yah's mouth. So when he speaks unto us, uh, it is the power of his Torah that speaks unto the seed of your, of your being, man. Uh, that produce the very fertilization uh, and the seed of a womb uh, to bring forth the child that you're embracing uh, in your arm today. This is a stupid generation. Everything that he spoke, it came to pass by his feth, his lotion, the language of Yah, because it is pure. And when he spoke, even unto the womb of Miriam, uh, from that came... Uh, the excellence of the life of Torah. Why did he make man then? Tell me that. Why did he make the birds and why did he make trees? This is a damnable, stupid generation. It's a generation that doesn't love Yah. It doesn't care for Yah. It doesn't give a damn for the things of the Most High. And they raise their children that way. The power of their home is that way. There is no light of truth, no light of his ahab. It is just not their Yisraya. They give their children over to every vile spirit there is. But yet these beasts will say they love their children. They will say they care for them. They will say that they have a heart for them. And it's just not the truth. We have not been taught. Mothers have learned how to be silly with their daughters. And fathers have learned how to clown with their sons. And as a young lad, I never saw that as a young lad as the elderly ones. I never. I don't care how old the son got. There was a place of great regard with him and his father. I don't care what pinnacle the daughter reach. There was always a divide between her and her Emma. That her words were seasoned. Today's filth in daughters and sons, they don't give a damn how they talk to their mother. They don't give a damn how they talk to their avat, their Emma. They just do not give a damn. Damn, they don't even care. With total disdain and disregard, without any cognates of order, the only commandment, the misvah with great promise, to honor thine avats and thine ima, that your yam, your days, your life, 
shall be long upon the land. O Maria grants unto Israel. And they simply do not give a damn today. And so they do not have the ability, they do not have the access to train and to teach because they have grown arrogant and haughty. And they have distanced themselves from what is right and proper to do. We have a vital responsibility. That's why I will never stop talking the way I talk. I don't give a damn if all men or women forsake me. I frankly do not give a damn. I will not. We need this kind of lecture and teaching that is strong. That pronounces our intent and our wickedness. I want to begin in this teaching today. In the book of Giliadna, we're still progressing. That we may understand the knowledge of the mark, the oath. The distinguished mark, the mind, the spirit of that which constitutes the beast identity. And we saw on last week, on last Shabbat, Nebuchadnezzar, that when his mind was withdrawn from the mighty oath, from the mighty aid or the testimony of Yah, in the midst of his kingdom, he was rendered to the nature of a beast. And so when a man's mind begins to object against the standards of Yah, he began to establish his own righteousness according to his own identity. He defies the living Torah of Yah and he rejects the most pronounced event and advent had ever been displayed upon the face of the earth uh, and that is the knowing of the power and the recognition uh, of your sure Hamashiach. He doesn't recognize your sure. His mind doesn't recognize the commandments of Yah because uh, he doesn't love Yah. If any man says that he loves Yah and keeps not the commandments, the mitzvah of Yah, he is a damnable uh, for you that have ears that are so soft, condemned. He is a man given to damnation. He is damned in the presence of God. And so this mind begins to form out a position. And the first driven motive is to raise up an army against the Most High. It is like this as an example that I have an oath against my zakhin that I began to ferment that, uh, that vow of that nature and try to draw everyone I can uh, into that disposition uh, that they think the way I think. Their attitude toward my zakhin uh, is the same as mine. Uh, and you began to ferment this image against my zakhin uh, that is not depictive of his nature, his character, and whom he is. And so the powers that be that Yah has raised up. He has allowed them to ferment this image in the minds of the, of the people of the earth. Because they have no concept of whom Yah is. We have no power or knowledge of the power of Yah. His power, his might, his excellence, his strength. His, his power to speak and, and nations are brought into existence. We don't have the knowledge of that. Because this vile, repugnant whore has trained our minds and caused us that when we hear things that oppose her kingdom, we defend that. When we hear things that oppose her kingdom and tries to bring her kingdom down, whatever the thing is, we began to resist, we began to fight, we began to hold up the standards of the kingdom of this nature of the beast. You watch the beast in the field. One begins to encroach upon their territory, they are going to fight. They are going to raise up their standard and that is what the enemy has done, the mark of the beast 
and the mark of man. It is a mind that is governed by the most vile, uh, subtle powers of, of darkness. There's a kingdom principle in that mind that rejects the power, the identity of Yah. And it begins to desecrate and to destroy his Hamashiach. It is a mind that uh, will try with all of its essence, its power, its might to relegate the mitzvah of Yah down to tricklings uh, of nothing of value and importance uh, concerning the kingdom blessings of Yah in the, this bayat, in this house. So there's a personal onslaught of activities against Yah in a subtle way without even the individuals understanding what is transpiring in them and what is happening in them. And they began to assault, insult everything that is of the nature of Almighty Yahweh. Their minds become acidine, their minds become seared whereby there is a disdain for anything that is truthful. Whereby there is a hatred, they don't even want to hear the words. Of anything that is of substance, uh, that manifests the power of Yah. Where the hearts become adamant, uh, and the opposition rises up uh, with a great attitude against Yah. It is the mark of a beast. It is the mark of man. It is not going to be done by their chips. This is a lot. This is a mystery of Yah. They can read these books by liars and thieves that rob them of their money because they don't know a damn thing. This is revealed by the power of the testimony of your sure in the bosom of the true messengers of Yah. It is not a learned process, it is revealed. It is made known the Yada, the experience of the Torah has opened their mind to understand the finite detail in every word, every daba, his dabarim, his words, every word of Yah is pure. And we saw our Zachin trying to exact. Hey, that out of himself to pour upon us and because we are lazy and shiftless we don't like to hear we get tired after a short period of time and we don't want to hear anymore then we get upset and angry I can testify like that my uh, my zakhin. this is the nature of a rebellious generation the mark the oath of the beast and man I want to begin here in Giliana there is so much to this, but believe me, I'm going to teach this until I finish the process that Yah has guided me on or until I die. One or the other. This is one message I will not cut short, period. I will not cut it short at all. The profound message as the utterance of Yah, the melech of Yah, as he will bring the coals from the fire of the altar of Yah for the revelation of his purity shall be made known unto Yahanan as he was there on the Isle of Patmos. And as he began to see, because his eyes had been anointed with the eye salve of Yah, he could see beyond the natural perspectives. He could see into the spiritual realm, into the deepness, uh, the lights, the mysteries, uh, the revelation of Yah. Our eyes are darkened, Yisrael. It is the constant defiance of Yah in our iniquitous ways uh, and the way of all vain or all vain. Uh, it is a perverse intent uh, to defy the Torah. If it's through our subtlety, our actions, our attitude, that is the spirit of Ovin. That is the nature of one that walks in Ovin. That they are doing to the best of their abilities and thinking that their subtleties are not seen by Yah. They defy the Torah, the mitzvah of Yah. 
Their minds are acting not in the consciousness of Torah, but it is a mind that operates uh, in, the, in the nature of a mind that is Torah-lessness. There is no power Torah. There is no unction from the Torah. There is no life of the Torah of Yeshua, Hamashiach, in that individual. And so as the profoundness of truth was revealed unto this man, he had to write by the instructions of the Ru'ach. As he shows us here in Revelation 13 and verse 16. As he shows us the very power of this one. Of this beast mind. That has the power to mock the mind of man. And that is what is happening today, Yisra'ya. As we can see. And what we call Hollywood, they raise up some of the most vilest of individuals, some of the most putrefied stench. They can take one of the most vilest of an individual as a thief and a liar and a murderer. They can take someone like Al Capone and make him a hero to many. They can take someone like Wild Bill Hickok as we were children and train our minds that the indigenous people that were here, they were the savages and the fools and make us all cheer for him. They could take a beast out of uh, their uh, convoluted minds uh, and stick this corrupt thing they call Tarzan uh, in the midst of a people uh, and we want Tarzan uh, to kill all of them. That is the truth. They can take Scarface, a cocaine snorting bastard. A murderer, a thief, a killer, and promote him in the minds of the people that they love Scarface. They can take the Godfather, a murderer that defies the commandments of Yah, a womanizer that abuses and bruises, and a corrupt thing. Uh, and make him the darling of a nation uh, and make him accepted by everyone uh, it is the power to establish Mishrem government rule and what rules uh, in the minds what is the nature of what's ruling in our minds today Yisrael what is the power of the spirit or what is behind that spirit that rules in our conscience, that creates in us uh, our objectives, uh, our concepts, our values. Uh, what is it? Is it based upon Torah? What is the concept? What is uh, the force uh, that creates uh, in, our, uh, in the minds of our young ones uh, to have this rebellionist, this deceit, uh, this, this uh, perpetual way of deceit and lies uh, and corrupt it, whereby they can't even speak to their mother or, or their father that birthed them uh, and takes care of them. Uh, what, what, what is the string behind that? Well, I will get to where I need to get to. We must understand truth. It is time out for us, Yisrael. Yokohan say this bohemian, this powerful one, this one that is anti Hamashiach, the mind of their own prophet, a pseudo, he says he had to, the power to cause a Uda. Do you understand when one has the power to cause wonder? That one has the ability to bring about the conditions, to bring about the events, to make one seek them. So he has the power to cause uh, because of what conditions are being presented unto them, because of what type circumstances uh, he causes by the circumstances. He causes by his power to convey uh, 
And to show you that things are in this condition, but unto us, Yisra'ah, we know that all is well. But it seems as though that it is chaotic. We know that the hand of Yah is that we know this. That Yah is control of all things, irregardless to how it looks. It is not the power of Hashatan, but it is the power of Almighty Yahweh in the bosom of Yisra'ah. It may seem as though that he is exacting Hoshatan power, he has the great wealth, but Yah is the one that is in control, Yisra'ah. We must not lose sight of that. We must not give credence unto the powers of hell. This is the government of Yah against those that want to fight against him. He is allowing that government to be established, their children to draw their swords, and he's going to use his weaponry, his indignation. His wrath, his power, his af, his za'am, he's going to use that. This is not constructed by the powers of hell. It is constructed by Yah. Yah raises up all governments. So it is not constructed by Hashatan. This is Yah's construct for the evil ones and those that are against him. He's going to give them the mind of a be rage or a deranged wild beast that rages as one that has uh, some kind of infection in their minds uh, that they cannot determine what is right and what is wrong. One that is a rabid inf infested thing that charges anything and everything runs in front of a 65 miles an hour car because uh, their minds uh, are twisted uh, and their minds have no controlling tentacles of power to control their actions at all uh, and that is what the enemy is doing because Yah has given that unto to him uh, and the reason why because uh, this is a nation this is a generation that has not received the love of Torah they don't understand how much the Torah loves them when he, Yah commands us to remember the Shabbat and keep it Kodosh. They don't understand to keep it Kadosh to set it apart uh, from all. They don't understand the love uh, of Torah. And because they don't understand the love of Torah, Yah's going to send strong delusions. Uh, he's going to send deceptions, not uh, Ashatan, that they may believe a lie, the Shekhar. The lying Jesus, the lying uh, first day, and the lying uh, deceptions of darkness. Because he wants to damn them. And he is going to damn them. And he calls. He conveys the environment, the circumstances. That they have no other one to rely upon. There's no other reliance. It's either we rely upon Yah or we don't. It's either that our motive is sincere. It's going to be tested, Yisra'ah. It's going to be Sarah. It's going to be Sarah. It's going to be tested by the fire of Yah's test. It's going to be tried, Yisra'ah. And that's the fact. Hallelujah. So he creates the condition by the commands of Yah. Did not Pharaoh create the condition for Yisra'ah? Who raised him up? Did not Almighty Yahweh raise him up? So who you think has raised up the power of this beast entity? He has raised it up throughout the chronicle of time. Whether it was the Babel entity or the Medio Persian, or whether the Grecian, whether the Roman, or whether this thing we call the United Devilish Snakes of Darkness. USA, Magog, Russia. The dragon, China, he raised the powers to be. 20 years ago, China did not have 500,000 televisions. They did not even have 100,000 cars. They had less than 200,000 washing machines 20 years ago. That's a fact. Now they have risen to one of the most prominent powers economically, physically, militarily, upon the face of the earth. This is not a superpower, this is a wimp of a power. And she has a contingency of a five million man military force. 
And that is the truth. And this one cause, as America is causing Israel today to deny Yah, to resist truth, not to have a camaraderie among Israel to seek out some of the most vilest of people to sit down to dine to eat with them. And he caused, it says here, both small, those that were not of great substance, and those that were robbed, they were men and women of excellent resources. He called the rich and the dull, the only, those that were poor, those that had nothing, those that had no resolve. He caused all men to receive, to lacha. He caused them to receive. It's almost like those when Michael Jordan or one of the sports what they call phenom they put out a pair of titty shoes to give you an identity of, of locha he calls them to receive and when the doors open on those industries that are selling the merchandise the people run like vicious beasts to receive or to siege upon it to lay hold on it to receive it to buy it so the conditions that shall be conveyed it was one thing about Adolf Hitler. He didn't cause the people to receive a mark, but they had a mark, did they not? They had the same ruach as this vile, corrupt man that was raised up from among them. It is one thing about this entity is is going to be raised up from among men. And they all were faithful unto his cause, his deeds, his actions and they pursued it faithfully we can look at the we can look at the paradigm of that to see what the paradigm of this government of the mark of the beast it is the power and I'm not talking about their heart systems and their ability to send out laser charges or some kind of subliminal type of mind ability to control the mind it is one thing that everything is done to control the mind. It is done only in one way. Only one way. It is by the mere speech of a man. It's by words. It's by words. And that shall be the catalyst. What does your gives us to control our mind? His Torah. The reading of the Torah, the hearing, the Shemach. The opening of our lab to hear the Torah with great obedience. So he presents all of the type uh, uh, things and the environment to cause to lacha. For men that will lay siege, they will run, they, they, will, they will delightfully receive uh, this concept, this constitution. Uh, that when they seek each other, they will know who is of that same uh, nature, the characteristic uh, of the same conscience, of the same mind, of the same passion, uh, the same desire. There will no Yisrael. It will be evident. It will be evident in their netzach, in their broyers, their foreheads. And you will see the mark of the beast, this, uh, this entity that is based upon their most damnable religious practice. And their economic proudness, it's all about that, isn't it? Isn't that what this kingdom is about? Yes. Man will not be able to buy or to sell because if they have not the mark of the beast. Let not these deceivers tell you uh, to buy your guns uh, and you're going to lay up enough that's going to sustain you. That's not the truth, Yisra'ya. Unless y'all provides for Yisra'ya, there is no way we're going to escape. We lay up the treasures. We don't go out and buy food. We do that uh, because it's wonderful to buy things that if you need it, uh, to put it back. But we buy the Torah. We buy the wisdom of Yah. We buy understanding, Yisra'ya. That is what we need to purchase. We need the Keshem. Uh, we, need the, we, we need the monies to buy that. We need the goal of Torah to buy that. Uh, and that is what the Keshem is. Uh, it is the silver, the goal. Uh, and we need faith to buy that. You can't buy it with money. We need faith to buy it. He caused them. He, 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 he creates the conditions of the earth to cause men, regardless of who they are, 
rich, poor, to lay hold on, to siege upon the opportunity to receive that constitution, that mind, the marker of that mind. And the mark of that mind is against Yah, and it is the mark of that mind that has disdain against Yahshua HaMashiach, and the mark of that man has no power of the Ruach HaKodash. That is the combination uh, in the spiritual analogy of the Mark 666. Six, six. Uh, it denies the Most High. It has uh, a mind to seek the damn gods uh, of the earth and the gods of their traditions uh, and the gods of their, of their learnings, Yisrael. The six is a mind that denies the power of Yah's Hamashiach, the living word, uh, the power of his heart uh, to, 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 uh, to rescue uh, a, a, a belligerent group of people that's not worth a damn. We're not worth a damn. That other six denounces the power of the Ruach. It has no power to be led by the Ruach HaChodesh. Every six is valuable and important. Everything Yah says is important. So he calls them. He calls them to lacha, to receive this, and that they embrace this concept, they embrace it. The word lacha is like a man and a wife uh, joining themselves together to procreate. And so they will join themselves together. What a man and a woman is lecha, if I must use that, when they lay hold each other, when they siege each other, it is a marriage. And they produce, don't they? And so when we, when man began to allow the mind of this entity of hell uh, to marry or to lecha, to lay hold, to seize his mind, uh, he began to produce the very concepts, the images uh, of the beast of man uh, that is against Yah. When he marries into this spirit, when he gives himself, even as uh, the Melechim, uh, when they saw that the daughters, the bath of, uh, of Yah's creation was beautiful, they came down, they went into them, uh, and the Torah says uh, that they produced Nephilites, uh, or men of renown. You understand, Yisrael? It produced children that their concepts uh, was a distant concept from Yah. These were the these were these were the beings that were cast out of Hashemayim. And so the Laka is our minds married to the concept of darkness. Uh, and that is the first engraving of that beastly spirit. Uh, that first engraving of six uh, that we denounce. Yeah, that's why when they see the coming uh, of your sure this damn mind uh, is going to rise up uh, and, and come against him to try to fight. Uh, that's why this damn mind rises up today. Uh, when one speaks in the unction and the power of that name, it rises up uh, to destroy, to dismantle, uh, and to bring an assault uh, against that mind we are an ignorant people we have not learned the ways of Yah because we love to pay these damn lying pigs and cowards that have been raised up by Yah out of the gates of hell I don't care if it's this little lion grinning Osteen this beast of a dog T.D. Jake this faggot freak in Atlanta long daddy bishop dog it makes no difference who they are they're the children of darkness. They turn the mind of Yisrael away from the great riches of the kingdom blessing. They turn their minds away from Yah. I don't care what they're local of what that's what they do. And they give them credence to continue in their ways, Yisrael. So this lacha, our minds married, we embrace that. We began to bring forth disciplines and concepts. And you can tell, you can look at an individual. You can look at a man's forehead and kind of tell his life, what, what, uh, what, what he was about. There were times you walked in a place, you knew that everybody knew uh, Big, Daddy, Big Daddy Slick. Big Daddy had the, his brows, he had a frown there. They, it, it, when he smiled, the frown was there. When Big Daddy Slick talked his words, everybody knew his words. When he looked, you knew, come on. You didn't want Big Daddy Slick to look at you, man. Even among his friends and those that he considered his equals. They knew the marking of Big Daddy Slick. We must understand the marking of this mind. It is a mind based upon those three principles of mind. It is the beastly concept. It denies you. It denies the power of his Hamashiach. It has no anointing. It has no, it has no power of his Ruach. HaChodash. There's a forcism. He calls them. Hallelujah. To receive an oath, a mark in their right hand, or in their Mesach. 
And that is what I'm going to deal with today, the Mesach, the mind. Both aspects are important. The right hand, it is vitally important when we begin to search out the knowledge of that in Torah. And the Mesach, uh, the Netzach, the forehead. I want to bring some clarity on that Israel yeah. that we may understand somewhat. All right. We must understand the nature and the heart and those that uh, are the zero of the seed of Hashotan and to get a tremendous descriptive analogy of that. Let us turn to Jeremiah. Jeremiah. I want to read a little of this prophecy here. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 3. Yah says unto Yisrael, Yah, he says, the Rabbi, the showers, the pouring out of the Ruach, therefore, the showers of the Rabbi. And the Rabbi unto us, Yisrael, Yah, it is the power of the prophetic utterance of the time we're in, of the nature of this system, this marking of the beast, that has been raised up by Yah, not to put a tav. A tav is a distinguish, a distinguished mark of Yah to show those who shall escape. And we have been sealed by the power of the Ruach HaChodesh Yisrael. We don't have a mark says Ruach HaChodesh on our foreheads. We don't have a mark of Ruach HaChodesh on our forehead. We don't have that. And the Nobi speaks with great utterance as the voice of Yah thunders into his Ruach. He says in Jeremiah 3 and 3, Therefore the showers of the Rabbi, the, the power of Yah's influence. Isn't that what prophecy is about? Is that you are sure Hamashiach, the Ruach of prophecy? You have no damn prophecy without him. It doesn't come in the damn name of Jesus. That is the mark of man that has been created by this most damnable polluted mind. A man that was anti-Hamashiach. A man that despised the true identity and the reality of the heritage of God's people. So they created this damn faggot of a beast. And it still burns in our minds as we wrestle and try to dismantle that. And that is the truth. It's engraved there. I know how the picture looks. You can't tell me. Because in our homes, in our dwelling place, every home you went to, it was there. It was there. It was the masterful deception that you are granted unto the beast. Because the people would not see the Rabbi. Or the Rabbi. The Rabbi, the prophetic influences of Yah. The minds were not open. We're not ready for the prophetic influences of Yah. And that is the power of the Ruach speaking. Of the mighty power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. You have no prophetic influences. You're a man, you're a person that understands letter. You don't even understand letter. You can read uh, from, from some type of dialectic form or ritualism. Uh, you can point out things as far as uh, a sequential uh, intellectual understanding. Uh, but it doesn't present the life or the power of Yah in us. Whereby we're not willing to defy his Torah and sin diligently in our efforts willingly. Uh, to go against the standards of Almighty Yahweh. And that's why the showers, Yah said, therefore, the Robi uh, have been withholden, they have been uh, manure. Yah said, I have withholden the prophetic influence upon Yisrael, the people, the nations. I have caused it to be hindered. I've caused it to be held back. That is what is manure. He said, I will hold it back. I will hold it back. Why are you going to do that, Yah? And there has been no loud rain. There has not been any kind of, uh, of mahush. The outpouring of the Ruach. Did he not say he would outpour? He will pour out his Ruach in the Akharith, uh, the Okuru in the last days. And that should be the power of prophecy. That should be uh, the mighty power of dreams among Israel. Yeah? There is no damn prophecy. Yeah? There are no damn dreams. There is nothing of the evidence uh, of the Rabbi, of the prophetic influence. 
influences upon you because we must grapple with the mind of man constantly. Our minds are not being shaped, it is not being instructed, it is not being formed by Torah. We love sensual things, we love damn folly, we love foolish things. You're not going to stop me. Preach on, preacher. I really like you. Even through your battles, your struggles, I still like you, preacher. Hallelujah. I like you. I really do, man. Keep on. I stand with you. He said, and there has been no latter rain. Why? Y'all says, and you not have pastors. You had a zanach. He said, you had a whore's forehead. Who can see that unless one is spiritual? Who can see a zana, whore's forehead? One that embraces, one that practices, one that loves some of the most vilest forms of idolatry. And our damn Jesus that we knew, and your damn Jesus, uh, is the spirit of idolatry. It is not of Yah. This was a concept that Yah granted as he did with, with Eob. And how Shaltan, when the messengers of Yah came to present the beauty of Yah's creation and to give him the report. Not that Yah needed them to do that, but he placed them there for their faithfulness. It says, when the sons of Yah came, then Hoshotan came also. And he asked him, what has been your commission? He says, walking to and fro in the earth. And we heard here some recently by Zaking Rabbi Yad that Hoshotan is as a roaring lion. He is as, he is not one. Walking to and fro, going about in the earth, seeking uh, whom he may devour. And he calls, he lacha, all oh, rich, poor, mighty, strong, rich, white, black, brown, to receive. He calls, he lacha. He calls them to embrace his reproduction skills. To reproduce lies and corruption, every kind of vile thing. Yah says, you have the forehead, or the misach, or the netzach. You have the forehead of a whore. You commit idolatry. You are idolatrous in your practice. You are idolatrous people that worship. That's a whore's forehead. Is one that has rejected Yah, the counsel, the commands of Yah, the Musa, the commands of Yah, the counsel of Yah. And it goes further about with every kind of spirit. They hear something, they take it and run. They don't search the Torah and see if the things are so because they're ignorant. Yah has given them up to that spirit, Yisra'ya. It says you have a four horse forehead. And Yah says, and you refuse to be ashamed of your action you refuse you refuse to be ashamed this is the generation that's arrogant and the beast is not ashamed y'all raise them up for that he's raising up this government it is one government listen to me Yisra Shemach. if it's capitalist democratic republican republic if it is totalitarianism, it can be communism, it can be atheism, it is all of the same government. It is a one world power of rule. Forget these jackasses that are trying to teach you about the Illuminati, the Club of Rome, and all these false damn deities of hell. There is only one government just as it is in the government of Yah. There is only one government of Yah. And that government is based upon the Torah, the principles, the enlightenment of the Torah, the mitzvah of Almighty Yah. And the government of hell, it is based upon the works, uh, the mitzvah, the works of darkness uh, that are contradictory uh, to the mitzvah, the commands uh, of Yah. That is uh, your one world order, Yisrael. These damn liars try to create this concept to make people think that the government is going to be of this. Uh, it's going to be a comedy. This government is going to be. No, that's not it. 
It is the mind that operates under one principle. Today people don't even know. They call tough evil and evil tough. They put bitter for sweet and they put sweet for bitter. And Yah say even they both, they are abominable. They're to a bar, they're filthy before Yah. So they don't even know what is right today. They don't even know how to discern a messenger of Yah. They don't know a true man. They yada, they don't even experience a, a true man of Yah. And they think that they are sincere with Yah. They're not my, uh, the sheep, they know his voice. Stranger, they won't follow. Well, I'm going to bring this home, yes, right, yeah. whether, you, whether you love me or not, that's all right. I got three pages of scripture. If I get through one page, that's all right. I'm not going to cut this short. You understand? Is this making some kind of sense to you? Ah, uh, it's so simple, isn't it? Ma'ak Mikaya wrote me the other day, say, man, when you, when you get rolling, you, you stop on us, man, come on. I'm going to do that today as well, my friend. I love you all there in Ohio. Yah said, there is no outpouring of the latter rain, or there is no outpouring of the Ruach. There is no Rabbi. There is no powerful influence of the Ruach of Yah. Because you as a nation, you as a people, and this world to be, they don't even recognize Yah. Don't you know these religious whores uh, that when Hurricane Hugo came through, uh, they blamed it on the devil? Anything of catastrophic mayhem, uh, and the people would say, well, if there's a God, quote, they would say, if there's a God, then no God would do that, unquote. That's what they say. No God has the power to do that. No wicked God has the power to do that. But he that created all things, Omari Yah, he is the one that commanded the waves of the tsunami. He commands the winds that rises up in the ocean. And when all of that hell broke loose during the tornado season out there in the Midwest, the communities of the complexion of their skin color was totally different than that little group you saw there in New Orleans. And you saw nothing but reputation and speak and the laws of their striving industrial Americans spirit that's all you heard uh, and those down there in the parishes uh, of New Orleans they were shiftless and they were dirty and they were dogs and they were wicked and they were vile and those out there that were lily in their skin complexion uh, they had the tenacity to reveal and the damn place is still raggedy out there I don't give a damn if you don't like me go on find someone else we must deal with reality and that is what the enemy loves to do, to take us into unreal things. Things that have no substance, no value, that will not produce anything. The speech of Yah produced the image of Yahshua in our minds, although we don't see him. We look to a glass darkly and, darkly and we say, ah, uh, I know there's something there. There's something to that truth. Hallelujah. And because of this mark that is upon us, because we have the mark of the whore. What does a whore do? She gets something and goes sell it. We will sell it out. We will sell Yah out. And he's not entrusting us with his riches, Yisrael. Because the mark of a whore. The mark of a whore. When a man goes looking for a whore, there is no mark on her head to say I'm a whore. She has no chip that says I'm a whore. This is the delusion of man to throw the mind of man and Yisrael. He is looking for the mind of true Yisrael. That's who he's looking for to, to distort the concept of the way Yah is going to do it. And so when a true messenger speaks, they have no concept that he's speaking the truth. But they will go by a book written by the damnable Lion Lahays and all of these damn dogs that are multi-millionaire. They will listen to a damn old wicked vile serpent of hell. And that's what he is, the Pat Robinson. This is the same bastard that said that God told him to run for president and he lost. This is the same bastard of the day that God told him... And I believe it's God told him that. I believe how short Tom talks to that man. Because that man was a, a feeblest, broke, penniless bastard. And now he's a billionaire. You understand? He said the other day that God told him who the next president is going to be. If that was a lapse, a secret, then share with your parishioners. He said, but I can't tell right now. I said, what an old fool he is. Because he was afraid to say to those 
that say that I want my country back, that Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, the powers that be, that God has raised him up for season. Hallelujah. And he's going to be the man next year as well. I don't give a damn how they vote. He is the one. He is the one. You always give your, uh, a king uh, of your nature. And this is a superficial nat nation, isn't it? Look at his upbringing. Brought up in a home that's full of duplicity. Hell, he didn't know whether he was black or white. The grandpa and the grandma said, nigger this and nigger that. Damn the niggers, they're thieves. That's what they said. You can try to reject it. You can try to get a little law. Uh, oh, he said that. Yeah. Let's deal with the reality of things. You tell me that's not a psychological, sociological uh, type of uh, uh, defect in one's mind? And that's why he had the grasp of something that was greater, bigger than him. His mind is not controlled by the legislation of Washington, D.C. It is controlled by the powers that be that Ra has raised up. He has set a power I will never forget. That little heart's feel, yeah, Barack, the old man, he's old. He came against me, but that's all right. But he told me, you're not going to be like the rest of them. He didn't even know what he was saying. He did not. I don't want you like the mother preachers. I don't even want you talking like them. I don't want you preaching like them. You're not going to talk like them. You're going to act like them. And he says to me one day, my young Ach, I saw the powers that be, one particular one that stands as a prince just like Daniel Yah when the prince of Persia was stood the messenger of Yah and he said I saw this being stand with its incident or the insignet and that's what America she has an insignet that it seals the minds of those that come in that they all think alike and they all gravitate to the same thing and so with her tentacles that Yah has raised up, she's spreading that throughout all the nations. And everyone wants to be a capitalist society. Everyone wants to, to have democracy. Don't you see that Yisra'i Yah ya raised up this dirty slut? She's a dirty horse. She kills, she butchers, she steals, she robs, she decapitates. She kills your baby, she kills your sons. She rape your daughters, she rape your sons. She turn your sons away in delusion thinking that they are actually women. She turns your daughters away, the beauty of the charm and the physical beauty. She turns them away after loss, lasciviousness and concupiscence that is against the grains of the Torah. And that's the mind being shaped. That's the whore's forehead. Unfaithful in the worship. The shakha of Yah. And we know we have a whore's forehead when we don't have any strength for Yah. We know we have the whore's forehead when there is never time that our hands are lifted to say, I love you, Yah. I praise you. When you can't go beyond your physical uh, emotion, man. Something is wrong with you. Something is not right in you. I don't care if you're 99 or 5. Hallelujah. Because the world makes their daughters and their sons do the buck when they're 3 or 4. They dance like naked little whores. Shake that booty little girl and she can make the che cheeks of the little hips shake. Look at that. Come on, come on, Shanaka Nuka. Make your hips shake, baby. And they make the cheeks of the little hips shake. And the damn hilarious stupidity of the adults, they sit there and just, ah, go ahead, baby, go. <laughs> Woo! And then when damn Uncle Bob have her when she's eight years old, you wonder why. Because you piece of a slut, you put that in her. I don't take one damn word back. I don't back down to these cowards of hell. I've said that the internet has made many strong and and made them think that they have character and strength because they can talk behind uh, some keystrokes. I will, man. They can talk behind some keystrokes, bold too. But face to face, they don't have the tenacity, the strength, the character. They don't have it. So the internet make a lot of people bold. I want to move on, Yisraya. Why is there no rabbi poured out? Because we're not ashamed of even what conscience we allow, the mark of that conscience. We know it is the mark of a beast. Those beasts in the field do not 
appreciate a damn thing. Oxymion can take hay, he can put, he can put molasses down, he can drop a little corn down, they don't give a damn. Now what if they would walk to his hands uh, and lick his hand? When I take care of these goats, they look at me like I'm an imp. Put it down, man, give me hay, put a little corn, uh, and we definitely want some molasses. Now we're not going to show you our appreciation. And that's the matter of a beast. There's no, no appreciation. There are no accolades to you. There is no strength of you on the bosom. That's the mark. That is not, that is the, not, that is the first six. The first six deal with the conscience of man that, that have this marking of a religious practice or of a religious conscience. We've gone down to the church house to be baptized. Oh, we've gone down to the church house to be baptized. And they're wicked. They're deplorable. They're sinful. They practice sin. They're vile. They're unclean, Israel. And the other six that are out of their mouth, oh, call, oh, the Lord has blessed me. I, I got a new car. I lied to get a car, but I got it. I lied to get a house, but I got it. I lied to get that, but I got it. Thank God for Mecca. Thank God for the blessings of Mecca. I would want to be nowhere else. I'd rather be in the city of Yah. The city of New Yerushalayim. Well, the build and make. I'm looking for that city who build and make is Yah. That's the city I'm looking for. I'm looking for the Erech, the land, the place. As they began to regather Yisrael, when Yahshua stood up that day in the Bay in, in Galilee, that was the day of the constitution of the regathering of Yisrael. That was gathered. That was their regathering. As he began to bring us into the oneness of mind, the Icha, Yah's Icha. And the oneness of mind, and the mind of Yahshua Hamashiach, we must have the same mind, the same love, the same attitude, the same ruach, the same compassion, the same care. There cannot be a plethora of love in the midst of Yisrael. There's only one love. Is Yah Ahava? Is He Ahav? Is He Love? There's only one love. There is no two different types of love. There is no three different types of love. Love is just pure. And my love for her is the same love I have for him. And my love for her is the same I have for her. My love for her is the same I have for him. My love for her is the same I have for him. It's the same love. Because if that love is pure, you will not do her wrong. No matter I will do him wrong. No matter I do her wrong. No matter I do, is that pure? My love for her will honor her. Will honor her. Will honor him. That's love, man. Not this damn mess they call love. It's pure. It has no respect. I don't give a if, if a mom, mom is a is a is a fruitless, uh, a wicked Jezebel. You esteem her. You have a greater propensity of direction toward her and a caring for her than you do Yisrael. You're a damn fool. You're not even a child of Yah. You're a child of your damn God. Damn your God. You're just like a pig. You wall in the, the pigs down the damn wickedness. You see them operating the damn sin. You have no character, no conscience to even have any shame of that. Damn you as well. I don't give a damn who you are. You reject my you're sure that 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 that, that mind, that head, that the rush, the power of every man is his rush. That's why the Nesach, the rush of a man, it is the power to control the government, it is to dispense, it is the order from the rush. Hell, your hand cannot scratch your toe unless the command comes from the highest of plateau. It must come from the pinnacle. Your sure is the pinnacle of man, he's the one that governs man. He governs by the mandate and the dictates of Almighty Yahweh. He doesn't govern after the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the He knows all things. He shall cause men. He shall look her, cause them to embrace him. To marry his man, to make babies, uh, and to distill that damn lie in the minds of your babies, uh, to teach them lies like our, uh, like our forefathers taught us the lies uh, of this damn Christ or this damn Jesus Christ. Uh, and this damn vile God. And the image of the people that oppress, rooted out, and stole. That was the God that you learn. He's a damn false God. He's a liar. And that's the truth, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. Do you get tired, man? No, I'm not tired yet. Hallelujah. Not yet. Proceeding in the process, we have this horse forehead. 
And it has come about through the spirit of idolatry. Yakahan gives us a depiction of that in its purest of forms. In the book of Giliana, Revelation, again, back to Revelation, chapter 14, and verse 9. He says, I saw this Melach. He says, I saw this Melach follow the sounds of the Shufah of Yah. And this Melach, Revelation 14, 9. Yokohan said he spoke with a loud with a loud call his voice. He says, if any man worship the beast, the behemoth, if any man worship the beast, the behemoth, this dumb thing that has no ability to do anything but eat, is that all the nature of a beast? He eats. That's why he is the behemoth. And that's the nature of the mark. He is a dumb man. He has no ability to do nothing but eat, sleep. Poverty ensue him. His mind is not enriched by the Torah of Yah. Just like the rich man says, my barns, I'm going to tear down these small barns and build bigger barns. I have much so I will eat, drink, and be merry. Was that not his response? And Yah said, you fool of a behemoth. You fool of a behemoth, a beast. You're dumb ass of a beast. You have no ability to do anything. He said, don't you know that your nephesh, the life of your being, your system, substance is required of you tonight? And who shall inherit your richest man? That's what a behemoth or behemoth is. It is one that has no ability. And the Melach warned as he cried with a loud voice, if any man give credence, if any man give any kind of connotation as to the validity of this system of this mind, what is the validity of the son? They deny, yeah, they deny Yahshua. They deny the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. And you'll be surprised how that spirit is sweeping. They're denying Yahshua. Don't you know that there was a bastard here that said that I denied Yahshua? What a dirty bastard. You people are crazy as cats, dumb. They're crazy as cats, poop. I'm trying to get something through our head and drive a point to us, Yisraya. Hell, if you can't appreciate Yah, how are you going to appreciate? If you, you can't say you have the, the, the son and, and you don't identify the father. If you don't acknowledge the father, you have not the son. And if any man acknowledge the true father, he has the son. Moving quickly, I want to get something done today. The Melach, he followed the, the messengers, uh, said with a loud voice, if any man give credence uh, or give any kind uh, of acknowledgement to this dumb, stupid mind that rejects Yah, and an image that is created in our minds, uh, were not an image, was an image created in our minds as young ones. Uh, on every coffee table in our home, you saw the image of a beast, a dumb, uh, lifeless, little, effeminate looking creature. You saw that. And all of a sudden you saw the life image of this little thing that mama, they would do all they could to get one to make sure we had one. It will call, uh, speak of the visions of darkness, uh, of the visions of hell. And it will speak the visions of hell. Uh, and then they become uh, to give us the horror and the things that condition our minds, uh, that we condition our children and they condition their children. You must understand that men of my age, we have children that have children that have children. Do you understand that? Here's a man, has a child that has children, and his child that had children, their, her children, his children are able to produce children. You understand? He has a son that has a son. He had a son that had a son, birthed a son through his zira, that that son is able to birth another son. So at our age, we have children that produce children that produce children. You understand, Yisrael? And so their minds have been conditioned to reject Yah, to deny Him. In the attitude, the actions, and all they do. So he, he said that any man that will worship the beast or, or give credence to this system uh, to deny, to, to negate the power of Yah, to negate the, the power of His Hamashiach. Uh, and it begins with images uh, created in our minds. Even we are the day, other day, uh, of the uh, the Asperas. If Yahshua stood right here, we, we will question him. 
Because there's an image in our mind that we think that that is the true image of Almighty Yah, the image of his reflection. Yoshu is the image of Yah's reflection. He is the image of the, what Yah reflects. Are we not the image of what Yoshu reflects? The truth, the righteousness of Yah. And so shall be the children of darkness. Yoshu said, you are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father will you do. He was a liar from the beginning. Because he abode not in truth. And any time men can lie without conscience. And they make, they are dirty bastards of Hashatan. And I'm not going to stop using the word bastard. One that has no assured identity or reality of the beginning where they've been birthed from. That's what a bastard is. Uh, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, one of the most expensive wines that they made or made at one time, it was called the bastard wine. And they're drinking the bastard's wine. And you can still buy the wine today. It's called Bastard. B-A-S-T-A-R-D. All right? So don't, with your proper enunciation, don't come to me, all right? Take it to someone like T.D. Jakes and these men telling them, uh, you are an English professor. I don't give a damn. You're going to teach them the proper etiquette of talk and, and enunciation and proper protocol to express. I know the protocol of Yah is to denounce the powers of hell, yeah. to denounce every kind of damn vile thing that stands up against the standards of Yah. That's my protocol. That's my proper etiquette. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, any man that, listen now, that he bow, not he, that he gives credence that in his mind, what is in your mind all the day long, Yisraeli? What is the image that your mind create? And the thing that takes predominant in your thought or takes or exercises uh, a, a tremendous energy in that day, that is the thing that you're worshiping. And you're creating images and thoughts and concepts. That is your, quote, God. You have a whore's forehead. That is your idolatry. You're practicing idolatry. You don't have to build a shrine and altar, burn incense, but you're burning the candles. You're keeping the light or your focus on, on that thing and that image all day long. I don't give a damn if it's Walmart. Go on here, do on that. Do. You're keeping your mind on that. You're keeping your mind on that. And that is the image, that is the strength of your mind, that is the strength uh, uh, of, your, of your great uh, emotion that day. If any man worship that or his image, you, you have created this image in your mind. You give more concentration on that than you do Yah. He said, and they receive his oath or the mark, the distinguished mark or the identity of this beast. What is the identity of this beast? What is it? He's coming with lying wonders. He's coming with deceit. To deceive the masses of people because uh, they will not receive the love of Torah. The mark of that mind doesn't love Torah. It damns the Shabbat. Uh, it says you don't have to keep it. Uh, it rejects Yah's name. Uh, it gives no honor to his name. Uh, it doesn't give a damn about his neighbor. Uh, it has no love. Uh, two great pillars of Yah's command. To love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love our re'ah. Our neighbor, R-A-A-Y-H, hyphen A-Y-H. R-A-A, as we love ourselves. And so this beast creates this convoluted thing we call love. It is a beastly mind. It doesn't know what love is. It has no expression of love, Yisra'ya. So if any man receive the image and receive the mark in his misach, or in his hand. We're going to deal with that forehead today. Hallelujah. Yah says the same, the same, shall drink of the af, the great indignation, or the ayin, the fresh wine, the wine of the af, the king dislike, the distaste, the king resentment of Yah. When he pours out his af, he said, I hate that bastard. Kill him. Burn him into hell. You rejected this powerful testimony. And what did you base all of your knowledge off? Was it not based upon teachings of others? Everything we have learned, it has been based upon principles and concepts laid in us by others. I don't give a damn how wise you think you are. That's why you all have never heard me in all of my years when it comes to evangelist hearts fail. You've never heard me denigrate the man, although he did me dirty, but that's all right. There were things that I learned from that man that were invaluable. They were so invaluable, although he did things that I would never do. I would never take the monies like he did and live the way he did. 
I will never buy a diamond ring that mine that even the, even the tabernacle would light up because of the glistering of the diamonds on that man's head. I would never spend $5,000, $1,000, $500 for a damn watch. He said, the same one that received that, he said, shall drink of the wine or the resentment of Yah, and there are those that Yah resents. He hates them. Yaakov have I love, and Isav have, there's a king resentment. I hate Isav. That is the nature of Isav, uh, that it will worship or it will give credence to one's own strength and one's own nature and one's own power. Yah says, my off, my resentment shall be upon him. Uh, Yah says, which is poured out. Listen how he's going to pour it out. Undiluted. He's not going to mix it with anything. It's like a man drinking 190 proof tequila without any chase anything. Uh, straight liquor. It's like one chewing on the boot, uh, habakia, jolokia, the boot jolokia, a pepper without water, nothing. In the Scovic scale of hotness, it is five million times, it gives you five million times of the unit of heat. Now, people that go to the hospital when they eat that boot, jolokia, baddest pepper in the world, it's so hot. That you can't handle it. Yah says, come in undiluted. I'm not adding no mercy, no kindness, no tenderness. He said, the cup of my za'am, of my madness and my craziness. You understand, Yisra'ah? Yeah? There are those that are walking in sin. They're so deluded and polluted. They don't even know that they have the indignation of Yah upon them. And his wrath is going to be poured out because they have the mind of this beast this behemoth this dumb stupid beast that is against yah it is a mind that resists rejects yah it is offended by yah because it is a horse forehead and the whore goes looking for idolatry and any kind of spiritual clarity or purity that one can say well i know that do you know this do you know his name do you know that that's this dumb ass generation it is a it is not a, a, an excellent ass because y'all cannot even ride on the backs of the strength of this generation for any kind of support at all yes sir, yeah. at least an ass you can utilize it for its strength its labor its ability to labor hard this generation it will not do that hallelujah hallelujah He's going to pour out his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and with brimstone in the presence of the set apart messengers, the Melechim, and in the presence of Yahshua Hamashiach. Tormented in the present. So that denounced the lie of the witnesses of their damnable Jehovah, isn't it? That they're going to be consumed, they're going to be burned up, and that's the end of that. Nah, Yah says it's going to be tormented. Hell has enlarged itself without measures. It was made for the Melechim that descended to, uh, by the throne of the hand of Hashatan against Yah. And Yah cast them out into the elements of what we call earth, or what we call the heavens. We think the heavens, in, in our imagination, we think the heavens uh, is limited to what we see, but that's not the heavens. The heavens is vast and great. We don't understand the magnitude of the creation of Yah. It's beyond our concept. It's beyond. That's why man is always searching. He cannot understand the beauty of the concept of Yah's creation. He only has to look here within man and see the strength of that creation. This did not come by some kind of evolution. This come by a creative mind of beyond a genius. It came by a mind that is beyond the, the, the mind of anything or any association of a mere thing that we can associate. That's why the concept of Yahshua, it cannot be conceived in the mind of a beast mind. Uh, it rejects that. That's why the concept of the Ruach, of the living power of Yah's breath, uh, it, cannot be, uh, it cannot be dismissed out of the order of any kind of religious power. The concept of the power of Yahshua, it, it cannot be dismissed by some kind of government of man, some kind of concept of man. That's why we see the nature of the 666 Yisra'ah. It cannot come that way. Just looking at man, that's enough to keep him busy all of his life. 
He doesn't ask to go out into the space if he could ever understand the dynamics and the concept of man and the brilliancy and the beauty of what Yah has done. He made man, Yisrael. Why did he make man? Hell, he had the Melakim that fall before him and the Ach Melakim of great power, great majesty and beauty that Hashatan, that every precious stone was the covering of his garment that he covered the altar of Almighty Yah to reflect the brilliancy and the beauty of Yah. And yet he, in his own arrogance, he rose up, he began to admire him uh, instead of him uh, he began to bestow upon him uh, the accolades of great power and that is the mind of the beast uh, we bestow upon us uh, we don't acknowledge him so that's why he doesn't understand man man can't understand the concept of Yoshua HaMashiach because their mind has been nurtured by the beast the spirit the system of this world it's been nurtured by the anti-Hamashiach spirit. It's been worship. It's been nurtured by images. Their mind has been nurtured by images. And so those that are the diasporas, they see that little thing they call the little white baby Jesus. That's what they call it. And it's a white baby Jesus. You say what you want to. Then they reject Hamashiach because of that image that has been impregnated in their minds. And it dispels the very image of Yahshua Hamashiach. And that's the truth, Yisrael. We can't, we can't denounce these things. Yeah, we must denounce them, but, but we must acknowledge them. We cannot say that it is not so. It is so today like it was in the 60s in my house as a child in the 50s. In the 60s, it is the same. It is no different at all. Oh, the matter of fact, it is more subtle, more slick. Uh, it is pronounced in a way uh, that it deals with the subconscious of one's mind. Uh, it controls the activities uh, uh, of the subliminal, of the, of, the, of the nucleus of their brain, how it functions. Uh, it alters the chemicals in their minds. Uh, and they are even more dumber than our forefathers. And that's just the truth. It's about images. This image they have of the Most High, it is a damn lie. It is an image of a God. And I have no problems with that. I won't even fight against that. I give them kudos because they have that image right. But it's not the image of the Most High, Yisrael. It's not the image of the Most High. And the image of that God is the image of this nation. And the image of what we call uh, uh, the world or the Roman entity. That's it. You know, I was looking yesterday, I'm going to finish today, don't worry. And I was looking at the unwedded birth rate from the la latest statistics. And the countries that have more of unwed birth rates between the age of 16, 15, and 19, the number one country, can I tell you, it is the USA. So the image is, is that the girls of the diaspora, they're the ones that are having a baby. Okay, and the next is Britain. And then the next is France, then the next is Germany, then the next is Sweden. You go to the continent of Africa, there's a law taught to their babies and their daughters that promiscuity is not even permitted in the midst of their tribal traditions and their rituals. And you don't find that. Because they're becoming what we call westernized today, everyone because of the image of the beast and this image of this mind of the beast, then the young girls are doing everything that everyone else is doing. Because those young women, even in those Arabic countries, you don't even find them even on the scope of that. But what they call the greatest countries, which is, which is the most adulterous and the most wickedest country, not that many of those countries don't do that, but they do it with great, with, great, with great secrecy. You understand? That's a price to pay. It's a price to pay with Yah as well, Yisrael Yah. Moving on, may I. He said, they're going to drink from this undiluted cup of my indignation. Because they have rejected Yah. Yisrael Yah, everything that it is ministered, it is administered by the Rush. That's why Yah is the head of Yahshua, was he not? And is he not? Did he not administer through his administration the avenues that he should walk when he should suffer the kind of death? Did he not administer that? Was he in control? We will sing the song, Y'all got it all in control. We know he has it in control. And Yahshua has everything that has been adjudicated unto him by the administration of Yah. He has it all under control. He is the Rosh and he has elected to choose Mac. And that's why he is the head of man. And a man is one that has the living power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach in him. And it is the breath of the Ruach HaKodesh that keeps that alive.
A boy is a boy. He has no cognitive conscious, uh, consciousness uh, of what is true, what is right, what is of Yah. He has nothing that, uh, nothing of that nature. And we have many boys today, very few men. Uh, that's why the price of the value of a man is going to be more valuable than the gold of Opha. Opha, the greatest of the substance and the purest of gold. Uh, when you find a man, you're finding a gem. You understand? Uh, you find a man, you're finding the treasures of the riches of Yah. That's why Yah said to Yeremiah, you go to the city of Yerushalayim. There's only one thing that I want you to look for. Those that cry and sigh for the indignation or for the iniquity, the sin that is upon this, uh, in this city. He said, and I want you to tithe, to put uh, a tithe, tithe, T-A-W-V, a tithe in their forehead, a mark, uh, a mark of escape that they will not, uh, they will not incur my wrath, my terror, my indignation upon them. I want you to put a tithe uh, in their forehead, a sign, uh, a seal of the Ruach HaKodesh. Just yes, it was when the death melach passed through Miss Rayim. It was the blood of the lamb. These dumb bastards say why he doesn't, he doesn't need man. He's great. Then I ask you a question, you ignorant beast of hell. You dumb ass of a fool. Why did he need a little baby lamb's blood then? Tell me that. When Abraham was going to sacrifice Yishak, why did y'all have a ram there in the bush for him to offer him up? Why, when he built the temple, he had Shalomo to put you all those thousands of animals. This is a damn foolish, stupid generation. It tries to rationalize and reason with one of the most damnedest, deluded thing there is. From this thing they call the mind. We need the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. Let that mind, Yisrael. They have nothing to twist you, Yisrael. They twist the Ketuv. But they will not twist it with me. You're that people that when they write, they say some of the most stupidest things. I, I don't even respond back to them. I say, okay, man, go ahead. Do your thing. All right, take care. And they think they have won the battle with me. They really do. One said to me the other day, man, don't be so sensitive. I say, do the work you need to do, man. All right, take care. I don't, I'm not going to waste time uh, to even uh, engage in conversation with people that are simple uh, and immature. I'm not going to do that, Yisrael. I don't have time. I don't have time for their conversations. They want to call me and talk scripture. I don't have time for it. I don't, Yisrael. I'm not going to take time for that. The power of his understanding comes by Shemach. Hear it. And you obey that. Can I proceed a little further? All right. I've talked about this administration here for a while, haven't I? I want to show you its, its strength, where it is constituted, the mark of the beast and man. Again, here in Revelation chapter 17. Revelation ch chapter 17. We're going to move here. This government, the spirit, it comes by this religious prostitute. And she has her government, her mishram, her power to ram, mishram, mishram. She has the power to ram things in the minds of her subjects. Was not that the principle of Adolf Hitler? He rammed it through teachings and the school system. Did he not utilize all that? The school system, the books and all of that. To ram it in the minds of the people. The teachers teaching the children that even the children will turn against their parents and turn them in. Well, that's not here today. You know, can I say this? I remember as a man, I was married. I was 23 years old. And I would say to my, my, my natural sister, you need to whip that boy's backside. He's going to grow up to despise you. Well, my Ema would say, oh, don't whip that boy. I'm the type, just don't whip them in my presence. Take them, go ahead and do your thing. But I don't want to be there when you do it. You understand? So I would say to her, you need to take that boy and spank his backside. When that boy was seven years old, they called me with this frantic call. So I went to visit the home. And she had ran away from home. My natural sister, the boy is seven. 
And so when I got to the house, my Ema tells me that I ought to spank him. I said, I'm not going to touch this fool. Hell, if he got his mama running away from home, what do you think he will do to me? If I touch this boy and he said, you better not touch me. I know how to call the police. You touch me. You tell me, children, do not do what the children of Hitler's reign of terror. You tell me they don't, they terrorize their parents greater than those children of Hitler. The parents are afraid. They can't say anything to them. They can't correct them. The wicked go astray even from the mother's womb. They go astray. They're wicked. And they're vowed. They're the children of perdition. Yes, Raya. In order for this administration to have its power to orchestrate or to carry out the commands of the commander, it must posi position itself in the nucleus of man to establish the distinctive mark of the leader. To dis establish the distinctive mark of the leader. What are the marks of Yisra'ya? Well, we have the Ruach HaKodesh. We have the patience of Yah. We have the meekness of the Ruach. We have Imona. We have the kindness. Come on, that's our mark. That's not written in our foreheads. We don't need no chip for that. We have the Ruach HaKodesh. And these lawyers are telling you, you're going to get a chip. Even the logistics will be, it will be so crazy to try to implement. And where would the wealth come from? You couldn't do it. With the dismantled system, with telecommunication destroyed and dismantled, tell me how in hell. Uh, people are stupid. We buy anything uh, that has this kind of, of euphoric nature to Oh, that's, oh, I know, you know, they're going to be putting chips in your Oh, they're going to put chips in your baby. Oh, they put chips in your Oh, they put chips in your Oh, they're doing that. Get out of my face, man. You already got their chip in you. They got a chip that even the dynamics of uh, electromagnetic, uh, electronic knowledge can't even touch. Hell, you go on the computers, they can tell you everything you do. They, they can actually, your face is scanned. E even though they want people, don't put stuff on the Facebooks and all of it. This damn stupid generation still does it. Uh, and they're telling the young men and women, don't touch that damn mass. And these are what you call the liberals. So there's already a chip. In my days, in our days, say, man, what's your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your ear, baby? You got a chip on your shoulder? You remember that one? Come on, okay. We, you know we can talk the same language. Huh? We write that each other. You're a little ahead of me. We can talk the same language. I know where you came from. See? All right. We got fellas that didn't, didn't roll like you. Say, man, what's, 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 what's the deal, player? Got chip on you? You know what the chip what, what that, You didn't see nothing on that man's shoulder. But you knew there was a mark there. Come on, talk to me, my friend. You knew that. You know. That's old school there. That's real old school. So said, what's up, dog? You got a chip on your shoulder. What do you mean? Come on, man. What's, hey, hey. Your attitude. Come on, man. What's the deal? Man, I ain't no problem. No, man. Come on, player. Don't go that way with me. You got a chip. Come on. You got a problem, man. You get it straight, man. Hey, you got, you, you got something with me? Come on. What's up? That's the way you want to come. Hey, come on, man. Whoa. Come on, man. You could see that mark where in his forehead. When he talked, you could see that. All right then. Todom Azachim. Witness there. All right. It says in the book of Gilead, the Revelation, the ministration of her power, how she dispenses it. It is through a religious concept in the mind. And that's how she has deluded and polluted those that are of the diasporas, those that are of the different pigmentation of skin color that are Yisra'ya scattered throughout the nations of the earth, where earth, she has done it through the concept, through this religious practice. That's how she's done it. See, that's the chip. And so when they hear your sure, they get a chip on their shoulder. Well, you can say you want you to, want to, quote, 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 I know the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord Jesus is my friend, and the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus, and the Lord Jesus, damn your Jesus. Unquote. You, you ain't going to tell me that. I've been the Baptist just all my life. Listen. There was a man the other day, I'm, I'm moving, don't worry. This man been a Baptist preacher all his life. 76 years old. I speak to him the other day. How are you doing? How's everything? I say, uh, he said, how was your Christmas and New Year? I say, 
first of all, my friend, I don't even deal with those circumstances. I say I don't go that way because it is based upon a fallacy, it's a falsehood. It is not based upon the principles of the Creator, the one that gave us the Torah. I don't deal with that. I say I do keep the New Year my Abba. And that began, so that's what, even when I read the, 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 the verse concerning uh, uh, the, the Rabbi, it was a time between April, March and April, whereby the, whereby the first rains will come, or the rains, if you study it, you'll see, the rains will come upon Palestine, or the, or the nation there, or the, or, or the territory of Israel. It was the first rain of the spring, is the rain that will give growth or strength to the roots of the crop. That's why we plant things in the spring here because it gets strength. That we get the spring shower. They would say, bring May flowers. So we would do that so we give strength unto the roots of the crop. That's why we have no root. What is the root of Israel? Well, I love for Torah. So the man says to me, oh man, uh, and we were talking about his, his place. I say, uh, he was, I don't know how it evolved, but he said, oh, they kicked me out. I said, they kick you out? Oh yeah, he said, they kicked me out three years ago because they said I was moving too fast. He, we were paying a man $500 a week to mow the grass, and the grass in the cemetery was that high. And so I got eight volunteers. We went out there and did that and cleaned it up. And the deacon said, now you're moving too fast. I fired the man who was doing that. We were paying someone to clean the restrooms and to clean it up. I gave him Zahinda Ramayas car and say, call us. We'll get it done for you. We'll come mow your grass for you. Isn't that a damn that we shame? He says, so I got eight young women and some mothers we clean up the place he said you could come in there with a white suit on and sit down with you get no dust on you he said the bathroom was so filthy you couldn't even go in the bathroom they were paying someone to clean that and the head deacon said you're going too fast we want you out of here and they put the man out i'm telling you that to say this and he said i'm going to start my own church I said, ah. this generation he said, I found a building. I said, well, we can do anything you want. You want us to put a roof on there for you? You got a building. That's what we're doing, work for a building. And then he came out of his mind. He said, but I'm going to need your help. Well, even though he's a little intimidated by me, he knows what I stand for. He knows what I preach. And he knows what I teach. He knows that. He knows it. And I will not condescend for him, not even for the devil. I would die. And I mean that. Death, what can it do to me? The dead knows nothing at all. How about that? The messenger of Yah in Gilgal Revelation 17, 1. He says, then came one of the complete order of the messengers, or seven messengers, uh, when Yod the seven, it is complete, it is finished, the perfection of his will is done. Messenger, who have the seven cups, he came and he talked with me saying, he said, get up. I want to show you the mishpat, the judgment, of who he calls her a rab. Not Ghadul, but a rab. The great Zana, the harlot, the whore. And it's one thing about a horse, she spreads diseases. She is a bearer of diseases. He said, I want to show you the judgment of the great whore who sits upon the many water, who governs the people. And the Mayhem represents uh, the very people of the earth, of the world, uh, scattered, uh, dispersed uh, throughout the nations. There's a mind, there's a spirit uh, that upon every water, this religious horse she governs. And she governs by three tenets that are equal to 666. These are her tenets. Verse 2. He says, with whom the Melechim, the mighty kings, the rulers, the Tsar of the earth, the Olam, they have practiced illicit sexuality. They have joined her in her vile nature, her corrupt activities, in her orgies of consumptuous greed and destroying the people. And just like Shilomo, the kingdom was under one power of rule until he began to speak a Roboam to his young, uh, uh, his young scholars, uh, 
and he says to the elders of Ephraim, he says, I tell you, you think that my father's hands were tough. You thought he was tough and he exacted. You haven't seen nothing yet. And they mocked and ridiculed and laughed. And the Zochim said, that's it. No more. We will pledge our legion, but because of your vile nature, we will not subjugate ourselves to that. So this nature of this whore, this religious whore, isn't that uh, in this ecumenical type activities that are being orchestrated, uh, isn't this whore of Christianity, uh, they all meet on the one banner, the banner of God. They meet with the Muslims under the banner of God. They meet with the Judaism, the, the Judaizers, uh, or the Judas Iscariots. They meet with the Hindus. Uh, they have this ecumenical spirit. And they meet under the banner. We know that there is one God. Uh, and there's a plethora of ways to come to Him. Well, that's a lie. Your shoes say there's only one way. You must come in at the door. Ah, the door is called the Torah of light. The Torah, the aura, The light of Torah that shines uh, and reflects on one kingdom. Uh, there is not a multi of kingdom. There is one kingdom uh, that is supreme and powerful. Uh, and that kingdom is marked by one testimony. And that testimony of Yoshua HaMashiach. And the breath of that kingdom is the breath of Yah. It is his Ruach HaKodesh. And the breath of the kingdom of, a, of man. It is, a, it is the sign of a beast full of darkness. It is the vile nature in that kingdom. We are under that kingdom rule. That's why he's going to gather us all. He's not putting that into my hand. Your hand. He's going to gather us by the power of the life of Yahshua. We are in a graveyard of sin. We are dry bones. Can we live? We are in the graveyard of sin. And the Ruach of Yah is going to speak. Get up, Yisrael. And out of the midst of the great trials of afflictions and agony. And the tears are going to be dried up. We're going to rise up like mighty warriors with the soul, with the power of the Torah of Yah in our bosom. And the strength of the fire of His word shall go forth out of us. And the opposition that rise up against us, we don't have to raise up a sword. It shall be the words that proceed out of our mouths that shall consume them, take their will, their power, their ability. That's the power granted unto Israel. Your shoes spoke as no man spoke. His words were powerful. They were mighty. His voice was like that of the thunders of the heavens. He brought out the thunders of the night, but he didn't go far enough for me. Because when the thunders began to roar, it makes me afraid. Yes, sir, I get afraid when the thunders are roar, when they roar. Because I know there's only one other thing coming after that. The light of his brightness. And so when I hear the thunders, it caused me to shake. Yes, sir, I get a little afraid of that, you know. Hallelujah. I, I, I kind of, as taught as a child, we would close the curtains and everything and hide ourselves until the indignation passed away. That's what, we would, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, cut off everything. Not turn it off, cut it off. No, 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 not turn it off. We will cut it off. And we will all, Granny will sit there and she will open that book and flay that thing open. Why? Because you could sense the, you could sense the, 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 the tremendous soberness in the midst of the crowd. No plan, no children grab ass again, acting like jackasses. There was a sober, quiet time. We were quiet. And when the thunder began to roll, we knew that there was something after that. And then the crackling of the lightning. Uh, and he's coming, uh, he's coming in the Hashemayam, uh, and he's coming in the brightness. Uh, lightning cannot touch the brightness uh, of the coming of Yeshua Hamashiach. When he comes to heavens, the Ola, the earth is going to light up with the brightness of Yah. There's darkness as Yah looked, uh, as Azak came brought out. Uh, he saw nothing but darkness. He said, Let there be light. Uh, he's going to declare it again in the midst of this dark horror. Uh, He's going to say, let the light of your shoe shine. Let the testimony of your shoe have a shine with brightness and the excellence of my power. And it shall shine. One more time he's going to do it. One more he's going to do it. It is all finished then. He's going to do it again.
had a woman was in a hotel write me the other day and say, uh, I like the fashion of the worship that the congregation. She wasn't talking about the clothing. She was talking about the way you preach, man. Just, she I like the way you fashion it. Uh, just keep doing it that way. And I'm not going to stop for nobody. Nobody. In whom the kings of the earth, the, the Menachim or the, or the Olam, they had practiced this ritualistic, sadistic form of government, of procuring the finances, of overtaxing the people. And the inhabitants of the earth have, they have been intoxicated with the wine of her holotry, with the wine of her zina. This is a holotry, Yisra'ya, that it derived from the deceit of such vile wickedness, the zina. And we are a deceived people. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And those that shall deceive them know it's their damn wicked hearts deceive them. If I be with you, I turn you away from Torah. I turn every man, every woman to Torah, every child. I turn them to Torah. He says that she has caused this kind of wickedness, this mischievous activities uh, through her zimma, through her subtleties uh, of alluring and drawing. That's what a pimp does. He sees a young girl, she doesn't have to have a sign and say, I'm a runaway. They don't have that, do they? No little young girl has no sign on the forehead, I'm a runaway. A pimp has the ability, he said, oh, she, uh, she's from home. I can tell. I don't care how she tries to pretend, he knows. And he'll say, girl, you, you want some coffee? You want something? Come on, come on. My name is Big Daddy Mac. Come, just, come on, I'll buy you something to eat. And when she relents to that, he knows that he has her. When we began to relent to the, to the delicacies of this world, uh, then the enemy knows that he has us in his webs, his clutches. He knows that. And so when Big Daddy Mac, as he sees her, he talks to her, and all of a sudden she feels this kinsman with Big Daddy Mac. He has nothing in common with her but one thing, the love of money. He has an evil heart. And he's not telling you, what, where, where you stand? You new to town? Oh yeah, I'm new to town. Uh, yeah, okay, I'll tell you what. I, you need somewhere to stay? I mean, I'll, I'll help you out. I've always done that. I'm, I'm tired of it happening. That's what the spirits say. America, come to America and, fill your, and fulfill your dreams, your, your heart's dream. Now, you're not going to fulfill no dreams here. You're going to fulfill the commands of the spirit that rules in America. I don't give a damn how you dream. We that are of Yisrael, Yah, we have a delight in the Torah of Yah. We delight ourselves in Yah. And then he gives us the very desires of our hearts. He gives us uh, the hafets of our hearts. Uh, he supplies to us what makes us happy and rich. Uh, and that enriches us. Uh, it is not a damn Cadillac. It's not a 50 room house. Hell, if you can't clean up a three bedroom house, how are you going to clean up a 50 room house? It's stupid. I was reading the other day, I read it, I saw a picture of it, uh, that Jezebel, she was, listen, the woman that married Tiger Woods, uh, she was a nanny. She was watching someone else's youngins. Uh, you understand, she didn't even have, come on, this man went to Stanford. Uh, you don't go to Stanford unless you have some kind, at least some kind of intelligence, intellectual properties uh, that have been based upon something uh, that is much more superior than others. Uh, he marries a damn nanny. Don't you know that there were women of the diaspora that were doctors and philosophers and psychiatrists? Had graduated from Stanford too, you understand? He married a little nerdy heifer. She purchased Yohimi. She was broke as a skunk. She walked away from the man with over a hundred million dollars. That's not including child support. That's her cash. She purchased the other day a one, two, comma, zero 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 comma zero 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 a twelve million dollar mansion you all hear me the mistress of tiger woods she purchased a mansion for twelve million dollars the other day that's a lot of money isn't it? 
Do you all hear me? I wouldn't even know what $12 million looked like. I wouldn't know what to do with $12 million. You, know, you give us $500,000, about $100,000. You talking about cutting a dance? Send me $100,000. I will make sure. Send me on, set the camera up. I dance wherever you want me to. I, I will dance. <clears throat> the woman purchased a $12 million mansion the other day. $12 million. Not $1.2 million. Not $6 bill, million. She purchased a $12 million mansion. And she had the mansion raised. I'll clarify that for you. She had it bulldozed down. She purchased a $12 million mansion. She just wanted the spot where the house was. And then she had the house raised. Torn to the ground. What a this, she purchased a $12 million house. She wanted the location. She had the house raised. Raised is that they demolish, demolition, destroyed it. I saw the picture that I said, what a stupid thing. How stupid. Well, she's going to put up something probably $50 million now. Because she has access to the money. As long as those young as the size they are, she's going to get a lot of money. You understand? So this is the nature of this mind of this beast. She is zima, every kind of wickedness that is vile. It is a plant, this hollow tree, this zima. Let me read that again. Revelation 17, 2. It talks about with whom the kings of the earth, the kings of the earth, have practiced illicit sexuality. And the inhabitants of the earth, which are us, we have been intoxicated with the eye and the wine of her zima. And the zima, it is a, it is a, it is a hollow tree of idolatry. But it is a plan that is carried out in the man, in the leba, in the lib of man. She practiced this zima. She purports and creates evil plans of seduction and sedition. And he, uh, and he lets me in the Ruach into the wilderness. And I saw this woman. He, I, I saw Yisraya. I saw this woman. I saw this woman. Sit upon a red beast. On this behemoth. This dumb beast. A prey. Which were filled with the name of blasphemy Nimhasa. I saw this woman this vile scarlet adulterous thing that looked as though that it was uh, of Yah and it was filled with every name of blasphemy what are the names of blasphemy can I tell you names that blaspheme Yah oh the Lord Jesus God Almighty the Lord God Jesus Christ the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Christ, Christo. These are the names, Yisraya, you hear me? These are the names that are still in our minds. We must eradicate. I saw this woman which, she, which was full of names. It did not say name or Hashem, does it? She was full of names, of blasphemy. Does not the word Lord and God and Jesus, uh, what is the blasphemy? It is to denounce, to deny with a Authority, the name uh, of the Creator. You should not take the name of the Most High in vain. He that doeth so or practice that shall not be guiltless. You shall not be held guiltless. And I saw this one, I saw this religious holotry of this power. I saw this kingdom manifestation. And in this nation, you got every name that blasphemes against the name of Yah. You got the Lord God. You got Jesus Christ, the Master. You got the Lord Jesus. You got Jesus Christ. You got Christ. You got God. You got the damn Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Spirit. All these are deceitful, blasphemy lies. He has one name. The Ruach has one name. He is, uh, the Ruach is Kadosh. He is the Kadosh. He is Kadosh. He is set apart. He is set apart. He is set apart for one purpose. That is the service and the administration of that which has been written. That which we have heard. And to make sure the Torah of Yah is carried out in his elect. That's what it's for. Full of the name of blasphemy. 
And he had seven heads, a perfect rule of a kingdom, and ten horns. We're going to bring all that out for you in the time to come. And the woman was clothed in purple and scarlet, and she and uh, gilded with gold and precious stones and pearls. And she had a cup in her hand, which were full of pollution and impurities, which are of her horams in the earth, her zimma Yisraya, her vowways, and upon her metzach, upon her forehead, listen, it was written, mystery, Mavel, the lat, the secretive auras and the secretive things of this deceitful workings of Babel to draw us away from the Most High. And one of the most powerful creations of a confused mind was the creation of their Jesus and their lords and their gods. That was one of the most powerful entities because it sought to kill every damn one because there was only one seed that this one was after. And that was the seed of Yisrael. The seed of the elect of Yah. Kill the babies, I don't give a damn. Kill mama, kill grandmama. I don't give a damn if she's a hundred and kill her. We're looking for one thing, that's the zero of Yisrael, the testimony of Yahshua. We must establish our ensign, our sign of our authority in the minds of the people that our government is carried out in the earth. We have a short time. It has been mandated by that one that sits above the heavens. And the earth is his footstool. He has relegated that to us. And we must show him we have power to dethrone him. We must kill the last one of them. Kill them all. That's why God's going to kill all her babies. Leave one alive, they will pollute. He's going to kill them all. He's going to kill her babies. He's going to kill all of them. And that's the truth. I don't care what kind of emotions you have. Because I use that. He's going to kill them all. He's going to kill them all. He doesn't deal with our juvenile emotions. Hallelujah. It tells of her religious covering. And all of this has to do with the house of Yisrael. Uh, and she has this gold cup. And, and, and there was a name written, Mystery Bavel. She is called the Great. The mother of Zima of Holotry. And abominations, all abominations of the earth. She is the one that creates the sickness in the minds of the people. She has a mark. She is the mystery of the hid dark secrets of darkness uh, that was embedded in the minds of the Melachim that fell uh, when they fell from Yah. They all were marked, Yisraya. They were marked with the marking of a beast and man. They have no power. They have no power to inject themselves uh, in, in, in the kingdom authority or in the kingdom rule. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. So they were dispensed into the atmosphere that is above us. Uh, and they cause all kind of cosmic, we think are cosmic disorder. It is them, the battle and the contention uh, among them. Because there is no honor among these uh, for the ruler uh, to present themselves as the most excellent one. Uh, there is the mystery and the only way that that mystery of the darkness of that secret is revealed. Uh, he is going to have to reveal it unto his abbot, his servants. That's the only way. She is Rab, she is great. Her tentacles expand unto every part of the earth. And you will know that it is of her kingdom when all of our concepts and our ideology and our thoughts are based upon the, that which is to a which is filthy, perverse, wicked. What is wicked? What anything that assaults, insults the kingdom of the message of truth. Anything that insults the Torah, anything that brings upon an, an assault the Torah, anything that rejects Torah, anything that has disdain for Torah, that is a, a to'eba. It is a perverse mind. It is a per perverse ruling power in your mind and that's, that is orchestrating and dispensing uh, the orders and the commands and you're obeying them. That's wrong, Yisraya. That's wrong. It's not of you. It's not of you, Yisraya. And she is the mother, she is a harlot, and she is the harlot of abominations in the earth. The sure oath, the sign of her nature, the nature of a beast. That cow, that bull out there in the field, that big billy goat. I looked the other day, we had two billies and two females. 
When they get her size, he will put babies in her as well. That's the beast. That's what she does. She doesn't, she, she wants to blur even the gender of people. She wants to blur. You got men today dressing in skin tights. You got men dressing in those things that women wear. What those tights under their clothing. Uh, they keep their legs warm. You got men that are what? You got men today wearing lipstick and all of that, Yisra'ya. You will be surprised at the multitude of men that are dressing that way. They're wearing lipstick. Uh, they got their hair curled like when they We're trying to blur the gender. That is what they're saying. So she is the mother of every kind of illicit spiritual activity. She brings in the Jesus. She said, Jesus, you can have sex with Buddha. And Buddha, you can have sex with Krishna. And Christian, you can have sex with confusion. I don't care if he's a man. And we're going to make a baby. We're going to make a religion. We're going to make some kind of us, uh, uh, nasty, Gnosticism. Whether you believe or not, you're all right. You don't have to believe in nothing. You can believe in you. Uh, you, you. You can have babies like that. And so that is a concept, Yisraya. That is a government. That is the mark of this beastly spirit. You look at a beast, uh, look at the nature of a beast, uh, and you can get concept of what the mark is all about. That's why, man, today, that folks don't even know what a cow look like. That folks, uh, if they saw a cow, they would run. I remember years ago, 30 years ago, he valued the heart's flow. He says to me, you know, uh, he said, Brother Robert, they asked this woman, I was watching the news clip, and they asked us, ask her, what do you think about the farmer they applied? She said, I don't care about no farmers. What do I need the farmer for? I don't need no farmer. So the, the reporter asked her, she, he said, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You're the on camera now. They want to show their brightness, their smartness. He said, where do you think milk come from? She said, my grocery store. I get it from there. So I don't care what the farmer's going through. I can go right down to the grocery store and get my milk. You said that woman. Don't you know that someone has to feed the cows and birth cows and and milk the cows and process the milk. What do you think the growth milk come from? Some some kind of tank and stuff? Milk and he said if that wasn't the most ignorant woman you ever seen, he said it was just stupidity. And she thought she was a, a woman of grand and intelligence. She said, I don't need I don't care about the farmers. I don't care about what their plight is. We don't need no farmers. I go to the grocery store and get my milk, honey. You look at the bees and watch their nature. That bull that got a mark on him is one thing. Make babies. He doesn't care if with his offspring. He doesn't care. He makes babies. He makes babies to make babies. One of the most powerful beasts in the jungle, the lion. He doesn't look at those lioness and say, this is my baby girl. He looks at the lioness and say, babies for you. And even the law of nature, after a while, when he gets old enough, it says, you can't produce no more strong babies. And it caused another or two or three other powerful males to come and say, oh man, we're going to kill you. And that's what this mind says. It says to you, we're going to kill you. We're going to destroy you. You're not producing enough of the will of the kingdom of darkness. You don't show the mark of this beast. Your conscience is not loyal. Your, your desire is not passionate. You're not with her shatan. You're not of this dark kingdom ruling. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to make you minuscule. We're going to bring you down to nothing. That's what it does. And anytime our minds are producing and we're governed by every kind of vile action or inaction, we're not active in the activities of the Torah. Our minds are, are not given to That is the mind of a beast, Yisraya. And we began to have intercourse with all kinds of images and thoughts. We began to think about this. We want food as it was in the days of Noah that was eating uh, and drinking. So shall it be in the days of the coming uh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. So our mind began to go into different reasons. We want to eat. We want to do that. We want to do that. We want to do this. Well, look at that. I want to have that. You understand? Anything to keep our minds deluded from Yah. It was one thing that Adam, his mind was not on the things of Yah, the principles. Uh, because the first thing he should have had said to Hava, where has this come from? What is this? Is this of the commands of Yah? He didn't have to ask her that. He knew that it was not of the will of Yah. And he went, he went into that knowing what he was doing was against the command of Yah. And Yah said, because of that, you're going to die. And that's a powerful teaching on that as far as the sorrows. I was looking at that yesterday. I was looking at that word, ita, ita sa, ita sa, the sorrow. It's, a, it's, a, it's an, it's an ita sa, it's a sorrow of great agony, of great pain. It is one, just not of the birth pain. It is one that one is captivated by the tyranny or, or the terror of that pain. And they live in a territory of pain. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She is the mother of every unclean thing. So you know that the Ruach of Yahshua is the Ruach of prophecy. And if there's no light of prophecy in our mind, there's no light of rain. And if we're thinking about things that are filthy and abominable, then we know that what is being birthed in us, Yisraya. And that's when we need to break down on our dirty knees and our unclean knees and get right with Yah. You understand? I was saying to my Akshimri, uh, there are times that, like the other day, believe me, I don't say this to be, to, to esteem or to lift. I, I appreciate the, the, the actions of my issue. I said to him, I said, man, let's go. If I don't get there, I got to get there on time because if I'm not their mama, whether I'm there or not, she forgets me. When it's time, she's going to take care of business. When it's time for prayer, she's already, even before the time. I said, well, I'm there and I said, let's go, man. We got six minutes to get home. And when I walked in the house the other night, she was just where I said she would be. Whether it's in the morning or not. Whether I'm there trying to pick up something to answer an email, she takes care of business. Why? Because that gives, that gives solidity to my strength. It's right to do, man. Even when I don't feel like it. I must say that. I must say because it's the honest truth. I will be lying. I don't care. I don't care. You don't see a missing prayer over here. She doesn't do that. Period. She doesn't look for excuses. And his words to me was, man, that's, that's beautiful. That's what we need. That's all right. All right, my Akshimri. I'll see you, my friend. You take care. All right. All right. Yabrak. I want to move just a little farther. I want to show you this. That's why I want to show you that. This mark. Only those that are spiritual are going to be able to discern that. I want to show you something. Let, let me move quickly here. Turn quickly to Shema, Exodus. Two things I want to show you today. I want to show you in the book of Exodus. Hallelujah. I need my glasses to shine. In the book of Exodus, where is that? No, that's not it. It's in the book of Dibari, I mean, Debri Chayain, Second Chronicles. And then I want to read this out of the book of Exodus, and then I'm going to stop there because it's too much. But I want to read this quickly in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 26 and verse 16. There must be one that is spiritual to understand this mark and only they will be able to see it and i will give you an example of that here in the book of second debri second chronicles 26 16. it's when aziah when he took upon his own nature and his name aziah implies that yah is my mighty strength what he said i would defy the order of yah's bayat I'm beyond that I'm the Melech. I have been uh, raised up by the Most High. And so what the Kohan says, uh, the Kohim has no jurisdiction over me. And so we got to take things into my own hand. Listen, we are a people that do that, don't we? I will take it into my own hand. I will reason in my own mind instead of reasoning. As Yah says, come let us reason. Now, you try to show me wrong in my Torah. And I will show you where you're wrong by my Torah. And so he rose up in the, in the arrogance of his own land. As we as a nation do. And this is what he did right here. Hallelujah. In 2nd yeah, Chronicles 26, 16. But when Uzziah was strong, he had the Koach. It says his love was Gaba. His heart was lifted up. His heart was raised up to great height. Just like Nebu Shenetzah. And we saw the outcome of him. The words of prophecy. He was, when he was raised up, uh, when he was lifted up to his own or to his shokhat, uh, to his destruction. For he did this for him, Ma'al, he transgressed, he defied Yisrael. And not only did he defy him, Ma'al, it was a treacherous act. For he transgressed against Yah. Does it say that? He did not transgress against man, but he transgressed. He, he did acts that were treacherously against Yah. Do we do acts of, of treacherousness in our minds against Yah? As we hate our brother, our hope without a cause, uh, as we have all against Yisra, Yah, we don't even lay our gifts down at the altar. We come before Yah in our surmising wicked ways and thinking that we are getting by. 
It's not so. So as his heart was lifted up, as we are lifted up in our own pride against Yah, the sovereign master, he did this what this, des this undeserving uh, beast of hell did. Hallelujah. He went into Bayat's uh, Hamikdash of Yah, and he burned incense upon the altar. A job, a responsibility that was only for the Kohan. You see, when people are lifted up today, they will say, I know, you know, I don't need you. Yahshua, before he ascended, he descended, he gave gifts unto men. He gave the gifts of Yah, the Gemuel of Yah, unto men. He did not give them to women, he gave them to men. And he gave the gifts uh, that would bring us all into the perfection of the Tomim, of the Torah of Yah. That we will all be brought into the unity of the Ikhat, of the one Imona unto a perfect man and that's why we cannot work in the perfect order and the perfectness of man uh, is there's a pleasure beyond expression uh, of one's delight in the revelation of the Torah or the power of the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach you hear people say well I'm not by no means perfect not because you you, you don't want to identify your sins you just got sinned uh, say I've sinned and then walk in the perfection of Yah that's all you do man they love their sins. They don't want to stop their damn wicked ways. Hallelujah. Verse 17. And Azariah, the one that he declared, Yah is my help. He is my sakhor. He is the one that helped me. He is my special help. And the Kohan and the Kohem, they went in after this man. And with him ate. That need is finished. It is the complete resolve, the new beginning. Yah said, I'm going to do a new thing here, man. You understand, Yisraya? With eight. He didn't take four or five, he took eight. Kohen, the sons of Aharon that are consecrated, set apart, made, commissioned, mandated by Yah to burn incense. They said unto this beast of a bastard, Go out of the Mikdash place, for you have, uh, you have been unfaithful. You have transgressed the ordinance of Yah that was given unto Aharon and for Levi. Get out of this house. Get out of this place. And there are those trying to offer up things to Yah, they have no power. There are those that are trying to speak on the power and the integrity of Yah's word, and they have no authority to do that at all. And they have been in their own prize lifted up because they think they have learned something that they can tell you that you think that you have not heard. There's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new that is being said. I'm saying the same words that those before me and those that scattered throughout the nation are saying it in a much more profound, much more prophetic manner than I'm saying it, Yisrael. They say these are the ones that are given to do that. They say, go out of this place, you have my all, oh, you are unfaithful. Zima, you are wretched whore. Neither shall it be for your honor from Yah, the sovereign master. Yah's not going to honor you for that. And these men thinking that Yah's honoring them, they have the mind of the beast and man. They are 666, six, six. they have it in their brow. Can you imagine how this king looked at them and said, I'm the king. I don't give a damn what you all say. Yah is the one that established all kings. Doesn't the Torah say that? He said, then, he wasn't repentant. He was Za'af. Uh, Not just Af, he was Za'af. Uh, he was enraged. He was petrified by their arrogance to confront him. He was indignant. I don't give a damn who you are, what he said. I am Azihah. I am the king. Yah is my strength. Get out of my damn face. I will offer it up. Wake up in here. Come out of that daydreaming. Hallelujah. He was raw. And he had a censer in his hand. We're going to teach on the mark of the forehead and the right hand. To burn incense. And while he was za'af, while he was wroth, while he was angry, this is the sure marking of Yah, the mark of this unclean spirit. It says, with the Kohim, 
It said that even leprosy even rose in his Mesach here. Or then start arising in his, it began to appear here. And only the Kohan, and only the Kohan could determine whether it was leprosy or unclean. It was not given to every man to determine whether it was unclean, but it rose in his forehead, his Mesach. Before the Kohim in the Bayat of Yah, from beside the Sorecha, the altar of Om, uh, beside the altar. It was this uh, it was this malignant cancer. That's what uh, 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 leprosy was. Uh, Zakain brought that out to us again. That cancer, uh, uh, it was a cancerous disease. There was nothing but death, the end result in that day for that. And that's why those that receive the mark, there's nothing but death. He shows us the very example, the prototype, the task neath in this disease. A mother of abomination, she is a filthy, dirty slut. She slept with everything. She is, the, she is the barrier of every kind of vile disease, every kind of transmitted sexual disease. It's not just because you intercourse in the physical way, but because you do it in a spiritual way. You allow her the power to rule into your mind, to inject things. People think they're saying something smart to you and it's something new. They only heard someone else say it, and they try to, to, try to fresh it up a little bit or, or try to regroup it in their own matters. But it's the same thing. Man, it's no different man. I'm not talking any different than this man or that man or this man that exude the Torah of Yah and that fight against sin. Hallelujah. And so the sarah, this malignant disease of, of the abomination of filth rose in his forehead. Isn't that where the, the concept of to Abar rise? The concept of doing things that are mischievous and wicked and unclean. Do they not arise here in the forehead? Can a woman not tell a lusty man when he's looking at her? Can a man not tell a lusty woman when she's looking at her? Does he have, does that man, does he put a sign say lust for you? He doesn't put that. Does the woman say I'm lusting for you baby? The heart is a wicked thing, a deceitful thing. I remember back in my days, I used to, most of y'all are too young, but, but they, they know who I'm talking about. It was a group called the Dells. And they wrote songs. Both back in those days, the songs were not, I say that the songs, there was not, I don't even know what the songs are today, but this stuff today is just flat out trash. It's just filthy. But they wrote songs, and there was one song about 25, 30 years ago, about 25 years ago. It's one of the only groups that never broke up. They stayed together through thick and thin they have never broke up the temptations all of those the supreme all of those groups uh, as the wicked dogs would say you do better by yourself uh, and then when they will separate they will become druggies and everything and the whole thing will just just fall apart you understand but that's what the greed of the wicked that's what they, they love money but that group has st stayed together all oh, they've been together about 40 50 years but come on they were, when i was when, come on in the days in the 70s uh, come on you talking about those cats i'm 20 those cats were come on they were like 30 and they've been together all those years, about 40 years. But they wrote a song back in the day. It was called, I, it was called, um, what was that song? The Heart is a House of Love. I think that, what's his name? He's dead now. Luther Vandross, he may have did something. I don't know, I'm thinking that. But there was a song back in the day. The heart is a house of love. That's how the song went. I remember that in the days. You remember that? You remember the song, Standing Ovation? Sad innovation it was another one. I'm not going to go to the other one. But those were the songs. They were songs that had a, 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 a finite quality of meaning. It was not like the filthy stuff. Hold you, dog you. Those men never, they never denigrated a woman like that. They lifted up the women. Even, you know, even, <laughs> they lifted up the women of the diaspora. They never, because hell, they knew that they had been beaten down and downtrodden and oppressed. They were never, you never, I never in all of my life as a young boy, heard a song where the men would call the women a dirty dog, a slut, a hoe. They never did that. You may go to some old blues joint and some man talking about how he made love to this one or that one. There's no love making. That was folly. That was lust, man. Hallelujah. So he says, as the, uh, as he, as the leprosy arose in his head, uh, and then verse 20, and Azariah, the chief Kohan, the one with authority from Yah, and all the Kohim, they looked upon him. See, only they. 
Who could only see that? Only those that had the spiritual insight and the wisdom, the spiritual uh, knowledge of Yah, they looked upon him and behold, he was leprosy. Now I will read how they detect when one was leprosy. That was an examination that took days and time. But they said, this man is leopard. He is a sarach ah. It is forehead in his mesach. And it said, and they thrust, they kicked him out from there. Yes, himself, even him, hasten also to get out. Because Yah, Yah had Nagal, he had smitten, he had stricken this man. He had shown him the ult ultimate defeat. Yah had smitten him. Listen to this. And Aziyah the Melach was Sarah. He was leopard to the day of his death. There are those that have transgressed the commands of Yah. Was Yahuda Iscariot marked from day of birth? Was he not the son of perdition? There are those that have the mark in them now. Only those that are spiritual will know. He's that is spiritual judge all things and he is judge of no man at all. He discerns. He has the ability to discern and to know. And these men had the ruach of Omar Yah. They cast him out and he knew that he was an unclean thing. He had the mark in his forehead, Yisra His mind was gone. He had no power. His arrogance that exude him, it was all brought down to the gates of hell because he defied Yah. And that is the mind of man. You see that my damn disorder. I establish my own sadek. We establish our own love, don't we? We establish our own kindness, what we perceive as kindness, uh, and our own care. Yeah. It is a road damn fire at all, yesterday. Yeah. He was that way until the day of his death. And he dwelt, he dwelled in several houses. He had no, he could not rule as king. He dwelt in several houses. Being a leopard, for he was cut off, for he was karach, he was karach, he was cut off, karach, he was cut off from bayet or the bayet of Yah, he was cut off from the riches of Yah. When they receive that they are cut off and they are meant to be walking with that, they already have the mark. You don't see the 666 with their mind. It is of the nature of a beast. They don't give a damn about Yah. They don't give a damn about Yisra. Yah. They don't even give a damn about Torah. They don't give a damn about anything that is precious and pure. He was cut off and Yotam, his son, was over the king's house, judging the people in the land. He dwelt in separate houses. I know it says several houses, but he dwelt in houses that were separated Yisra. Yah. Because of this wickedness of this mark in his forehead. And there are those that have the mark of this beast system. They have a mind that is against Yah. They have a conscience that will not obey the commands of Almighty Yah, Yisra Yah. It is important that we understand that. There is something, let me, give me a few moments, all right. I want to read something here that will show us. Something very powerful. Let me read two verses. It will take about five, ten minutes to explain them, all right? The vitalness of the forehead, the Mesach. I want to show you how that and what Yah is going to use to destroy the kingdom. Listen to me, Yisra'ya. Yeah. I know that we mean well and we want to know and we will at times search. But we need laborers to truly search the book for us. I'm going to show you an example here, all right? Write it down, you that are listening. Oh, you think you're a brilliant man? No, I'm not. I know I'm not a brilliant man. He has taken those things that are simple and confound the wise. That's what Yah has done. And what He has done, the beauty of His simplicity of Torah, He has revealed it unto the babes. Those that know they have no ability and no strength to do anything. I want to show you how this kingdom mind, the only way it must be relegated down to the depths of darkness, how it arises in its pronounced fashion, but yet there's only one thing that can take it down. Let me show you. 
Turn quickly to the book of Debra, Debri, Debri, Chayaim, Second Chronicles. Quickly, you're already there. 26, just go back two chapters. The book of Chronicles, Second Chronicles 26 and verse 16. No, that's not what I'm looking for. That's not the one. I'm looking for, I'm sorry, Shemuel, First Shemuel, that's it, First Shemuel. First Shemuel, First Samuel chapter 17, verse 49. You all know this story. It's, it's, this is what's going to bring the end to the kingdom works of darkness, even in our mind. And I will show you that, Yisra'ya. Yeah? We must put on the breastplate of Sadiq. Must we not do that? Yeah. The breastplate of the Sadiq of Yahweh. Look at this. It says that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 49, it talks about Dawid. When he had this confrontation against this kingdom power, against Goliath, this vile beast of hell, this Philistine, it says in verse 49, and Dawid, he put his hand in his bag. The bag represents something. I will show you what this bag represents. And he took a stone, not just to a stone, and he slain it, he threw it, and it smote in the Philistines' forehead, and the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face upon the earth. What is this stone? We know that the stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone, the testimony of Yahshua. But this truth and the power of what that we use, it is the strength of the royal elect of Yah. And there's only one place we can understand this, that the stone represents and what it represents. That's why the mind of this beast uh, is going to be destroyed. And the fowls of the air are going to eat and consume the wicked. Let me direct your attention here quickly to, uh, to Shemoth, to Exodus 28. And I'm going to close from here. This is a very dynamic teaching, the teaching itself. And one day, Yahweh's will, I will teach this. Even this tremendous act of Dawid as he put this stone in the Philistine's head. This is the stone that Dawid used. And I'll, I'll explain this to you here in Exodus 28:30. It is talking about the garment of, of Haran. Did not the, uh, the, the, the chief uh, Azariah tell uh, Aziah that this is only the administration of Yah. You have no right to do this. And there was a garment or a breastplate for Haran. We must put on the breastplate of the righteousness. What is Yah's Sadiq? It is his Torah. It says in Exodus 20, 30, he said, And you shall put on the Hushin or the pouch. The breastplate of the high Kohan. And it was designed for one thing. It was designed, you should put on the breastplate, which is designed for the Orim. I taught on the Orim, on what it means, or the specifics of it. And the Orim represents the or the light, or the representation of the authority of Yah upon the chief Kohan. And he said, you must put, and in that, and the Tomim, or, 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 the, or the perfection of Yah, that is the perfection. And when one has that on, then the Kohan will cast a stone to see if that thing was so. And there was a stone in his pouch. Uh, and it represents the authority of Yah. Whether this thing uh, shall be. Well it shall come to pass. Uh, as they cast lots. For the garments of Yahshua. They wanted that the world wanted the garments of Yahshua. So they rolled the dice. And they cast the stones. Uh, for the garment of Yahshua HaMashiach. You shall put on the breastplates. Of the Orim. And also the breastplate or the stone of the Tomim. Of the Mishpat or the judgment, you shall put on the breastplate of judgment, of judgment. And he tells us this breastplate is the Urim. And he also tells us of the Tomim. He says, and it shall be upon Aharon's left. When he goes before Yah, and Aharon shall bear the judgment of the children of Yisra'el upon his heart. And he shall do that continuously. It was the Orim and the Tomim. And in the Tomim was a stone that when he would cast that stone, it would let him know whether this lot or this decision by Almighty Yah, whether it was so 
whether it shall be and it would use in conjunction with the Orim. If you go and listen to the message I've taught many years ago on the Orim and the Tomim, you will understand this perfectly. And so that is the stone. Dawi did what was commanded in his heart by Almighty Yah. And that's why he pulled the stone out of the patch and he sent it into the Mesach, the forehead of this kingdom power. You must destroy the head. And when the head came down, he cut it, he cut it off, whereby there is no life in it all. That's why we must denounce, dispel every kind of thought casting down, every imagination and every thought that exalts itself of Against the power of the kingdom total rule in the bosom uh, of Israel. We must cast it down uh, and bring it down to the gates of hell uh, because that is a sure induction of the mark of the beast and man. And the leprosy arose in his hand. And only those that were spiritual could see it. Only those. And there were those that even though he was the king, they still wanted him in the midst. He was cut off from Israel. And so we need the stone. What stone? Yeshua is the chief stone. And we cannot build on the Torah without him. And a mind of a beast and man, 666, it will not build upon that principle. May the riches of Yah, I will stop that period. I intended to sit down today. But sometimes I get excited. I stop there. That's where I'm going to stop. That's it. I wanted to read these scriptures here, but I did not. But that's all right. I'm stopping. May the riches of your rest upon you all, Yisraya. May he strengthen you all. Hallelujah. Yeah. May he cause your heart to delight in the riches of his Torah. We do need your help, you that have joined us on the you stream, the live stream. It costs. Send a gift and an offering. Help us that you can watch and be a part of the service, the live broadcast. If this message today was any kind of inspiration to you, any assistant in your walk, then send a gift to help us. We're not beggars, but help us, Yisrael. Do that. Instead of buying the donut, chocolate donuts out of Walmart this week, send the offering. To do you well not to eat the donuts of the Cupcake City. How about that? Is that all right? Do we have the cake this week? And the sweeties. And send a gift to help. May the riches of your rest upon you all. May I rock you all. We do hope that the Torah today was a blessing to you. May Yah grant unto us as a nation of people where we get to the place where we really know how to share, to worship Yah. And the move of the Ruach just move and we forget about ourselves and just Him. Where there will be no need of this kind of teaching. We need to get from beyond where we are. All right. May Yah brought you all our friends, our enemies. Shabbat Shalom. Let us stand to our feet. And turn toward Yerushalayim, the city of Yah. Hallelujah. In all things we debarak you, Ara Abba, for your blessings of riches in Yeshua. We told you for all that you have granted unto us this Shabbat. Give us riches of this understanding that it be fruitful in our bodies. And that we can hear, we pray for our, our precious Ach, Yaakob there in Texas. Strengthen him. Heal our Yaakov, Yaakov there in Florida, and our precious Ak, bless his kindness. And all of those are precious Ak, and Daewit, and Susie, and Yah there in Britain. Bless them for the kindness of their gift. Strengthen them and touch them in Yahshua's mighty name. We ask you to touch our Ak, we there in Bergs, Head, Scotland. Beautiful conversation. Faithful Ak, touch him. We ask in Yahshua's name and all of our friends and all of those that love you, Yah, we pray for them. Our Achot Arita Yah, our Im Miriam, Miriam, there in Maryland, and every Achot, every Ima, every Ach, every Zachay. We pray for them, our little ones, our babies. Strengthen them and keep them and watch over them from under the hands of the enemy. We ask all things and the blessed assurance of the only name of strength and that's the name of Yoshua Hamashir. We will rock you with all of our essence in Yoshua's name. And with our whole love, we cry hallelujah. 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 Amen. Yabarak Yisrael.